It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therat's here. Mary Jo Foley's here. And unlike Microsoft, they do have something to share at this time. We're going to talk about a report that says Windows 11 version 22H2 is coming in September. And a surprising rumor that this might be the last big update of Windows for some time to come. Stay tuned for the details. We'll talk about Outlook for Windows. They moved the cheese again. And do you want animated widgets in your taskbar? Well, Paul doesn't, and he'll explain why. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 790, recorded Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. Chub smuggling. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by ClickUp, the productivity platform that'll save you one day a week on work, guaranteed. Use code Windows to get 15% off ClickUp's massive unlimited plan for a year meaning you could start reclaiming your time for under $5 a month. Sign up today at ClickUp.com. But hurry, this offer ends soon. And by InfraScale. InfraScale delivers industry-leading data protection through backup and disaster recovery. Visit InfraScale.com slash twit to sign up for a free demo and see how InfraScale protects your business today. It's time for Windows Weekly, the yes dozers and winners. It's your turn to take over the channel and talk about the best operating system ever made, Microsoft Windows 10 and 11. Hello, Paul Therat, Therat.com. You're in beautiful. Amiga DOS was pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. You are in beautiful Eternal Spring, Mexico. Mm -hmm. What's that? all that Eternal Spring stuff all about there? So if you look at the climate graph for almost any place on earth you'll see this kind of big curve where the highs are really high and the lows are really low and the delta yeah. between them is big but if you look at the one from mexico city it's not quite a straight line but it's pretty close so oh. the high temperature difference between any month of the year and another is less huh. than 10 degrees and the low temperature is less than 10 degrees so it's uh, nice. it's basically the same weather aside from rain all year long and that's why it it's says eternal, eternal spring, spring on your tv Never no, mind. It's because I have a YouTube channel called The Eternal Spring. Oh, is that the name of your YouTube channel? Yes. Oh, it's all coming together now. <laughs> and is your YouTube channel all about your place in Mexico City? Yes. <gasps> Mary Jo Foley, I figured it out. You did. There's it Mary Jo Foley. It's not Eternal Spring here. It is no. not. Is it, how hot is no. it in, uh, in Manhattan? It's only 80 today. Oh, nothing. So pretty good. We hit 101 yesterday. Ooh. <laughs> oh, God. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Yeah, no. It is eternal hell here. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. Oof. Yeah. Oof. But it's over now. It's cooling yeah. off. In fact, there's a 38% chance of rain, which is very yes. weird. You need it. Oh, God, do we need it. Holy yep. moly. Um. Anyway... <laughs> How are you? I'm well. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. um, you? Mary Jo and I would like a word with you, Paul. Okay. Can you stop posting all those food pictures on Instagram? You're yes. making us hungry. I have one more to do, and then we're going home. <laughs> Good. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> You're making I mean, us hungry. Wow. The thing that's classic to me is, with, with the exception of, I think, one, no, two places, all of those are within a seven-minute walk of my apartment. That's amazing. Wow. That is always yes. blowing me away. Well, yep. I'm glad you, uh, you've you decided not to, to leave us behind. <laughs> and, I, um, I wish I could leave everything behind. I wanted to stay here. We have to fly uh, home yeah, tomorrow. I have that feeling, yeah. Not, not in the mood. So why go home at all? That's my question. Well, we have kids and pets. Oh, and, yeah, um, sure. Things to reconcile, things like financially, that. Yeah. real estate wise. It's coming to a, it's coming to a head, though, isn't it? <laughs> you are you are about to move down there, aren't you? I can tell. I feel it. <laughs> well, we're going to split our time for sure. I don't think we're. Yeah. I don't believe we'd move here full time, but 
Yeah. We'll see. Let's talk about Windows, shall we? Why not? Why yeah, not? Why not? Why not? Is there anything to say? Sure is. It's the it's the silly season uh, for the, you know the other uh, shows because late August, you know, <laughs> nothing much. Yeah. All happens. it is is rumors about what day things are going to get. Yeah, announced. things like that. Yeah. But no. So let's start off with a rumor about what day exactly. things are going to get oh, released. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So tell me. Uh, well, the rumor we... is from Windows Central. Mm -hmm. Windows 11 22H2 will start rolling out on September 20th, which is the Tuesday after Patch Tuesday in September. September 20th. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I have no idea if that's true. I haven't heard anything about a day. But, you know, we thought it was going to be September or October. We've been kind of saying that all mm -hmm. along. Fall. Fall update. Well, and it seems like it kind of came together quickly enough that October was a little late. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's mm -hmm. one of those things that makes sense. Um, right. The most interesting thing, you know, the date is whatever. But the right. the most interesting thing about this report to me is this notion of moments, which uh, Zach had yep. reported previously. And how they might they Microsoft intend to release at least one before the end of the year, and that that will be where we see, see things like file explorer tabs mm -hmm. and uh, suggested action. So, yeah, that's okay. And this is this kind of rolling release schedule is a nightmare. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so happy that we're entering into this era. <sighs> yep. Maybe it'll fix my right. PC. That's all. I'm, I can always hope, right? Mm -hmm. right. It's going to fix my computer and Windows will run beautifully <laughs> and all would be well. Yeah. You know, it's still yeah, going to so be terrible, but it will look nice. <laughs> it will look better. It'll look nice. Yeah. So you, Paul, you're on 22H2. Mm -hmm. I am on 22H2 here because you told me to. <laughs> See, I, I feel like you're misunderstanding what I said to you. <laughs> Mary Jo, though, you're probably still using Windows 10, I'm guessing. No. no. I'm using Windows 11 20. One H two, like a sane and like normal, a normal person, person would. <laughs> yes. What sure. happened to twenty two H one? Was there one? That, no, there wasn't one. No, no because no, because when last those... fall they said there would only be one feature update per year. Oh, and this the is it. Foreseeable future. Okay. Twenty one. Right. So twenty one H one, twenty two H two. Right. I knew that. I just thought right. I'd ask for those who were puzzled, like me. And then, if if yeah. Windows Central is right, if Zach Bowden's right. Then we suddenly go to one major update mm -hmm. of Windows every three years, what? starting in 2024. So he's saying Windows 12 would be, if, if they call it that, in 2024. Will be 2024. And in between, you could have up to four things called moments. Moments. Other updates. <laughs> it's just a moment I'm having a moment just thinking about it, you know. A moment. Too. Where'd they yeah. come up with that? That sounds like such a PR well, term, right? It, it is total. It's it's the someone who makes yeah. slides to explain new features yeah. in a product will use yeah. these terms like we're trying to light up new experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a moment. It's a yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. So he's saying we'll get 22H2 starting on September 20th. It'll start rolling out to the mainstream. And then sometime before the end of this calendar year, if the dates stay as they are now, people will get this mm -hmm. update. We don't even know how, through Windows Update maybe or through one of these other various update channels they have. Uh, and it'll give you the tabbed file explorer and it will give you um, suggest suggested actions and maybe some other features. Huh. We don't know. They have not confirmed any of this. The dates, the thing about moments. Um, they haven't said when tabbed file explorer will show up. They've said none of these things, right? So this is all rumors. It's all speculation. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, but and Zach is a reliable reporter for this I, kind I of feel thing. Like I would say he, it's he, very. He clearly has good sources. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yep, agree. Yeah, so I guess the thing I take away from all this, and our our next story is part of this too, is we're moving into a new way of Windows, and a new way we have to think about Windows, right? Uh, that we haven't had for a while. For a while, it's been very. Yeah. After Windows 8, I think they kind of said, okay, that was, a, that was a fiasco. We should stop trying to just roll features out willy-nilly, and we should stop just thinking, this is a mobile operating system, which is what they were trying to turn it into. And now the pendulum yeah, is swinging right. back, and we're going well, because Panos, Panos thinks 
we should be thinking about Windows like yeah. it's that it's an equivalent to Android and iOS, which it is not. Um, but he's he's going to update it that same way, even though business users do not want this. But here we go. I don't. Yeah. Jeez, yeah, I'm I'm, so, I'm I'm really mixed on this. <laughs> I, I, I think, yeah. well, the whole Windows as a service thing, which actually, you were right, but you're right, by the way. It came out of Windows 8. The, it did. When yeah. Steve Ballmer announced Windows 8 won a year after Windows 8, he talked about we're going to move into this rapid release era. Mm -hmm. And they did 8.1, 8.1.1, et cetera, and then added, bright, you know, brought the snap ready back eventually. And yeah. then they did Windows 10. And Windows 10, Windows as a service. Remember, they originally said three yep. feature updates a year. Uh, yep. They went to two. This did not go well, and <laughs> yep. But the but the interesting thing, I hate to I I hate to say this because, it, you know, I don't want them to make these many updates. But the thing that they did do in this time frame was they made it technically more reliable to update Windows mm -hmm. outside of the major release path. Right. In other words, mm -hmm. we can just pick yeah. and choose little components of Windows and update them, and they actually mm -hmm. seem to have done a good job with that. And I think this is what enables these moments as we're going to call them, yeah. you know, functional updates, right? Because you know, app, up, right. app updates are easy enough and you can do some work like they did to bring more and more into the app store over time. Mm -hmm. But really what you want is that app store style updating capability, but for discrete operating system components. And I feel like they actually got it there. Um, yeah. As much as I want to complain about fair. Windows as a service, right? It, no, which is fair. terrible. Yeah. But yeah. Right. So I, I, I don't know. It, will it be confusing yeah. to people to go to Windows 11, 22 H2 in a month or two, and then go to get a all of a sudden one day wake up and have a new file explorer tab interface two months later? I don't know. I mean, I, if you use right. something as simple as a Chromebook, you're getting OS updates. You get a yeah. pop up that says, "Hey, here's what's new." You see this in browser updates. Mm -hmm. You see it in mobile app updates. I mean, maybe yeah. this is the way of the world. And uh, I think, as long as they I can do it reliably. Right. right. I think it's going to be fine for consumers, right? Consumers, yeah. people who are tech savvy, people listen to the show. It's not going to be an issue for us and, and people like right. us. Right. The people it's going to be an issue for our businesses, right? And so say a business decides to roll out to um, Windows 11 22H2. They train their right. users. Here's what it looks like. This is everything. And then one day their user comes in and clicks on File Explorer and is and the navigation is different. It's got tabs, right. right? Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Actually, that 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 change is actually right. visually more jarring, um, and it's right. a functional thing that I think will screw people up. So yeah. we don't because Moments is basically a rumor. Microsoft has yep. never confirmed it. The other half of the story is we don't know whether Microsoft will provide group policies or whatever to yeah. allow organizations not to get those moments. Mm -hmm. And then a year goes by and maybe you would just get them in bulk with some 23H2 right. right. release or whatever. Yeah. Do we, we like this? Do we, do we like this? Is this good? We are uncomfortable with it because we hate change, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, I, and because, frankly, uh, they haven't done a great job. You know, I think I, I, Windows as a Service is the big example of making these kinds of transitions. So when you hear every three years, there's anyone who's been around for a while, like we have, is like, oh, thank God, you know, this is much better. But the asterisk to that is, oh, but we were going to release moments throughout the year. So it's not really one feature update a year, right? It's one big yeah. feature update a year with several functional uh, changes over the course of the year as well. Right. So, so what, I think what businesses... Zach, that what Zach has heard, by the way, what Zach has heard is they may do away with the big feature update in the fall. So there might not there be go. a 23 H2 next year. Okay. But we don't know. Right. I give up. Yeah. Just when you get used <laughs> I to it. Just, I know. I just, I think, you, seriously. you know what? I think the idea of giving people more features when they're ready is good. Like the theory of that is good. Like why should you have to wait three years or even one year to get all these features? But yes, I, they've got to communicate this clearly and their track record on this is very poor. Right. Like, so you, it would be nice to get a little bar to come up and say, hey, today we refreshed you and you get this tabbed mm -hmm. file explorer. That would be helpful. But I feel like the thing they're not doing because they want to have this surprise element is not telling people in advance what they're going to do. Like if they come right. out in the fall and have a press conference and say, we're going to do this moment saying, here's how this is going to work. You'll be able as an IT manager to shut off these features and never have your users get them until you're ready to roll them out. I think it would just calm people down. I do. So, 
I think for businesses though, enterprises in particular, you still have to have some notion of versioning because that's how the yeah. support life cycle is built, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if what you're what you're suggesting, because I don't, this is not a we don't know what they're doing exactly, right. but yeah, no. I, I I still feel like there would have to be a twenty three H two, just because there's some point of where you collect it all together, or issue it as right. an ISO or something that businesses can deploy. B right. PC makers can put on their hardware mm -hmm. and that the once a year cadence for something like that just makes sense because that's the yeah. world, I iOS, mm -hmm. Android, mm -hmm. from OS, yeah. they all do this. Right. Um, but not, mar yeah, I mean, from the perspective of a consumer, if they're going to stick with Windows 11 for three years or for some mm -hmm. indefinite time period, yeah, I mean, adding new features is fine. It's just, I feel like you have to name these things somehow. Like you have to be able to say, Agreed. the reason this is exciting is because we have this new release called something and it's exciting. And here's the yep. list of features. It gets mm -hmm. a little murkier when you're just releasing new features willy nilly it every does. couple of months and over a couple yeah. more months. And, you know, right. right. But if it's, it's not, like everything like, say else. They did, they, there's, we don't even know if there'll be a schedule. Like we don't know, will it be quarterly right. or will you get like three moments in the first half of the year and then one before the year ends? We don't know. Right. I'm definitely <laughs> going to have at least three moments. And also <laughs> I, Listen, I, you want to say, you want to give Microsoft the benefit of the doubt and say, look, you're evolving it. That makes sense. You know, things mm -hmm. change as we move forward. Yes, absolutely. And yet there's the, the, the more cynical part of me, which is most of me says, you know, you've changed this so many times. It suggests exactly. you have no plan and no idea it what does. you're doing and that <laughs> yeah, you go down these paths and they don't work out. And so you just change it yet again. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, we've uh, hypothesized it, it, in the past that it's because of changing leadership. Like, yeah, we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sanofsky leaves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So his plan's out the window. New guy says, I got a better idea. And they do it that way for Sorry, a while. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And and by the way, that Sanofsky leaving, Sanofsky was the every three year guy. He left. And then we adopt, we Windows adopted more of a mobile phone strategy. It was no coincidence that the person in charge of Windows Phone went over to Windows after that. Mm -hmm. There was a leadership gap there for what, a year and a half, two years or something, where no one really was yep. directly responsible. Windows is well, not Windows. directly, <laughs> or wasn't directly responsible, yep. uh, re um, directly represented on the senior leadership team. Um, and now Panos Panay, who comes out of the hardware division, is doing, you know, putting his imprint on it. Mm -hmm. this Whatever is, that means. Do you think be. this is his idea? Moments yes. is a very Panosy kind of. That's thing. a Panos idea all the way. Yeah, it yeah. Is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can, yeah, I can almost brand, taste this moment. Can you taste the moment? It's so good. branding, yeah, branding is whatever. I, I I don't. That term is you know you throw up in your mouth a little bit when you hear it. Yeah, but, but who cares? It's, it's just a term. I agree with it's you. It's just yeah. a term. I I, and, yeah. it, and it, from right. a technical perspective, I think it's what I said earlier. It's just. They did the back end work to make this kind of thing possible. We can call it whatever we want to call it, but um, releasing new features in the operating system every so often, keeping it fresh. You know, like she, like Mary just said, it's it, this is good for consumers. Um, yeah. Well, it'll be easier you know, for them to understand what's going on, I guess. I think so because the rest of the world's like this, right? Sometimes you wake up yeah. and your iPhone rebooted, and hey, look, you have a new whatever. I don't know what they right. do on iPhone, but you know, there's a new thing here. You know, whatever it is, yeah. some privacy thing or whatever. Yeah. Um, like that happens. Just, it happens everywhere. I know. I think the thing everybody has to remember, though, is Microsoft is a business company. Like, yes, they have 30 percent or whatever of their user base as consumers, but the rest is business. Right. And this is what happened to Windows 8. They just Microsoft steamrolled the business community. They gave them all the feedback they needed about what a disaster Windows 8 was going to be. And they said, nope, we know better and we're going to do it this way. Right. I feel like we're kind of on the teetering on the edge of this again. Right. Like, you know what? All the mobile platforms do this, so we should do this on Windows. The problem is Windows is not the same as iOS and Android, right? It's a business no, operating system for a lot of people, right? So this is why this is why it gets a little dicey to me about, you know, well, it sounds fun, yeah. it sounds great, but, like, is it really good for businesses to do this this I, way? Uh, again, uh, to, to put myself in the weird position of defending Microsoft, I guess <laughs> I would also say, and I, I think you'd agree with this looking back over the past 20 years, you know, businesses – move very slowly, maybe right. too slowly. And, and every one of the, anyone who likes to move at that slow you know, pace will point to the, all the things that went wrong, you know, whatever, whatever it was, they can always point to something. And yeah, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. There have been problems. If you're still citing windows NT 4.0 SP2, it's time to update your criticism because <laughs> there's been a lot newer things that have happened right. since then. But right. 
I, like I said, I, I feel like they've done a good job in the back end, mm -hmm. more seamlessly upgrading Windows. Maybe it's time for businesses to rethink they handle these things. Um, and maybe businesses aren't giving their users enough credit. They uh, handle great change on the phones they use every day. Um, why can't they handle what will basically be minor change on the desktop operating system they use for work? Um, I'm just, uh, it's almost, I'm not You're playing devil's advocate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not literally saying I believe that, but it's, yeah. I don't know. It's an interesting debate. Mm -hmm. It is like one of my friends who works at Microsoft always says, he said, you know, who hates change the most it it hates change, right? Because yeah, right. they're the ones who have right. to deal with all the questions and all the problems when people don't understand things. My computer won't do what it used to, blah, 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 right? So until you have a whole new generation of IT people who think change is fun and change is exciting, well, <laughs> and I, I understand no, no. how it so, works on phones, right? <laughs> I don't think it has to be fun, but what it has to do yeah. is not be disruptive. So in other words, if yeah. IT is spending a lot of time <sighs> manually updating systems every month with patch Tuesday or every year with version updates or whatever it is, whatever the schedule is there. If that's what they're spending time on, if Microsoft right. fixed that process so that you never had to worry about it, they could right. be more proactive and do things yeah. for their users rather than responding to complaints all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's right. not a horrible world. It's just that I think these people get so caught up in what work has been for so long that they might not be open to yeah. the fact that this could be better. Yeah. Yep. Fair. Maybe. I just I don't I do this. Work, I feel though. like I feel like the pr the one thing that has to be good and the track record here is bad is communication, right? <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like let's let's bring the second story in on this because I feel like this mm. is related, right? So okay. we found out yesterday, well, we didn't find out till this morning that Microsoft is right. now going to um, turn on notifications in widgets on the desktop in Windows 11. And you know how they told right. people about this? It's a really fine print thing in the Microsoft release health page in Microsoft Docs. They didn't announce it. They didn't tell people anywhere. Right. Um, Tom Warren at The Verge saw this and wrote a mm -hmm. story about it. Um, I contacted Microsoft and I'm like, hey, are you going to tell people kind of more broadly that this is happening? And can you turn this off? Um, so this would be if you have widgets on your taskbar, like, say, the finance widget or, or breaking news, like when things are happening, it'll be like flashing down on your desktop. Like you'll see on the taskbar, like the stock ticker will be changing and stuff. And I'm like, you know, for some people, that's going to be super and they're going to love that. They're going to think that's awesome. And for yep. other people, that's going to be so distracting. And if you can't turn that off, then people are just going to shut widgets off, right? Because that's just going so, to be overwhelming. <laughs> this is in many ways the quintessential Windows 11 feature. Because yeah. in Windows 10, they had something very much like the widgets called news mm -hmm. and interest. And the way it was originally configured was you would mouse over the little icon for the thing. It was a weather forecast, just like we have now in mm -hmm. Windows 11. And this thing would pop up. And it was really kind of jarring, you know. And so they built a control into it so you could say, well, don't don't pop up the the news and information panel if I just mouse over it. Yeah. Let me click on it, and that will make it come mm -hmm. out. And so they made it configurable after people complained. So you move forward to Windows 11. We have the same thing. They call it widgets now. They put it in a different place. The original version was just an icon, but over time they added the weather forecast bit. And right. so there are people who probably don't mind seeing the weather there on the taskbar. It's mm -hmm. a nice little feature. Mm -hmm. right. But if you mouse yeah. over it, widgets comes up, and no, there is no control to not do that. So yeah. when you say, will there be a control to turn off this notification feature? Notifications. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, there's no, I don't yeah. know, maybe. <laughs> you know, but it's it's so like Microsoft to, uh, you know, there's people in Redmond kind of, <laughs> rubbing their hands together. Oh, I can't wait till people see this. It's going to be a, such a moment for them. You know, this yeah. is going to be, you know, and it's no like, pun intended. Where, where most people, like I'll be uh, someone like me who uses computers for work and is just trying to yeah. get the job done. Yeah. We'll see some uh, distracting thing in the corner and be like, what the, what the heck yeah. is going on? What over is here? happening? Like, right? why is, yeah. why is this thing moving around now? Yeah. You know, and it's, why is I, the I stock I, arrow going up and then it's going down and then it's like, yeah. like you're like, wait a minute, what is happening I, right now? I think, they, I think they underestimate how badly these things can impact people. How cranky how people controls. like uh, yep. you are. Yeah. Well, like people are, I would say, you know, can Most be. People. I mean, you're like I Mary Joseph. You yeah. think to people yeah. really, you're going to go, oh man, I don't want that arrow moving. 
Sorry, I think like it would be if you're driving a car, or you're, or do, you, do you want one day for there to be this thing flashing in the corner while you're driving down the road, and then you, you have to look at it to figure out what it is, and it, it's, it's just, you can, and it's not. You, uh, of course, you could turn it off. Yes, you can turn widgets off. Oh, you can't you can turn off turn the animation the in the widgets. Oh. Right, right. That's it's, not they've so made good. it less configurable, and now they're adding features, which of course they will. It's you know we're moving forward. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I just I, I wish there was a little more thought yeah. about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, and my, communication, my like Mary Jo said, communication is the is the problem yep. here, right? Because it felt almost like yep. they're sliding this in in a place that most people will not hear about it until it happens on their computer. Right. It's going so, to happen yeah, over the think, coming weeks, right? <laughs> think about the two alternatives here. We're, we're going to surprise people with this new feature. We're not going to announce yeah. it. We're just going to surprise them. Yeah. One way to do it is one day you boot up your computer and this window pops up in the middle and says, hey, congratulations, you just got this new feature for widgets. Here's what it yeah. does. Here's where you can turn it off if you don't want it, blah, blah, blah. This is how yep. it works. Great. Or just one day all of a sudden you're working, like I said, and bing, 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 down in the corner. Yeah. What it you know, like, what's going wrong down here? Is this malware? What is this? <laughs> like, I, I, I don't understand that line of thinking. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. No, you know what? And they're going to do B, option B of those two things you just said. And you know why they're going right. to do that? Because a lot of people don't want widgets, right? Or they haven't really clicked on widgets or they haven't checked it out, right? So right. if they see something flashing, Microsoft's saying, okay, if they see something flashing, they're going to click that. Then we're going to they're going to see the whole thing with widgets and all the possibilities. And they're going to start seeing, oh, that's where we put ads and where they can search with Bing, right? So it's just like, right. I feel like it's a trick almost. And I don't, I don't like <laughs> feeling like I'm being tricked, it's right? It's <laughs> it's a trap. It is. This is exactly like um, uh, crap where the PC makers pre-install on, on Windows. Yeah. We did. Yeah. I did these studies for Signature PC Group, which is long gone. But at the time, you would you know bring a bunch of people in a room, show them different configurations, have them take notes and feedback. And it's 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 almost like a kids in the hall joke. You know, it's like what we found after all these years was that. Nine out of 10 people can't stand it. But one out of 10 is like, oh, my God, I got extra stuff on my computer. That's fun. You know, and those people are out there. And and less humorously, there will be people who maybe follow stocks. And for some reason, this is how they do it. And they may want to see a little stock update in the corner. And God bless those people. There's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. inflicting that kind of UI on the majority of people who don't yeah. want it. Yeah. Is so is it your prediction right that there will be a hue and cry that people will be upset about this? Or that nobody will notice and right. nothing will happen. Or you know, that somebody at The yeah. Verge will write an article, hey, this is exciting. Your Windows widgets are moving now. Which 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 well, is the three alternatives? That, that, that part will happen for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't, <laughs> and to, I'll write an article telling you how you can turn it how off. How to turn um, it off. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It's hard to say. I, it is hard to say. I don't know. I mean, maybe... I don't know. I think... I, I feel like businesses already probably any businesses who are already on Windows 11, like big businesses, will have already turned off widgets, and that's just not even on, well, right? Like, yeah, like who who wants this thing on? Like people who are not getting work yeah. done, you know? Like, I've been trying right. to screw around all day at work, so I'm reading news stories over here in this feed yeah. instead of getting actual work done. Or who uses Windows day to day for work? Like, what do well, you wait using a minute for, though? Right? I'm work. looking in my widgets. Here's an article: useful layering tricks when styling a corset. With straps, mm -hmm. see, see, I, right. you know, you need that. if if that hadn't shown up that. there, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. All right, fair enough. No, I think you've come debunked my yeah, thoughts. Thank goodness oh, um, for that. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm okay. Just bear with me because I'm slow. Yes, I won't have to open that little widgets tray to see the motion. It will be there. Right. Yes. Automated and the hope is that that animation will cause you to click on it, which well, will that's cause you to go about. to the web it's the and load mode. Edge and yeah. load MSN yeah. and load Bing. and then Yeah, Microsoft remember in, in, uh, in Pac-Man, in fact, all the arcade video games, they had something called attract mode, which mm -hmm. would be the going on on the screen mm -hmm. in the arcade. Yeah, in animation. Yeah. And it, hoping to draw you in to play the game. That's right. That's exactly right. So they're adding yeah. attract mode to widgets, basically. basically. Well, so, so, so basically. yeah, no, and that, that actually, you can kind of follow the evolution of this thing. This is, again, like Mary Jo said, it's completely to drive you to Microsoft products and services. It's the only yeah. reason it exists. Yeah. Right. It's, it's just like user, Edge user saying, come on, but you'd really like to use the first, Bing as your Yeah, change. so the first version was, was stuck in with the other buttons. It didn't animate, didn't do anything. No one saw it. So Microsoft came up with, I think, is an ingenious, insidious idea. 
Hey, here's, the, here's the plan. Let's put it where the start button used to go. Exactly. Because that people will, will automatically click on this thing, right? And then they were like, all right, all right, well, that didn't work. Nobody's touching like, it. So Nobody's touching we'll it. We'll put the we'll the weather on it. That'll, the weather will get people going for sure. And that probably did something. I think both those things mm -hmm. did something to raise yeah. engagement. Mm -hmm. And this is the next step. Like, well, you could have stocks in there. You could have sports scores. You could have, mm -hmm. you know, name anything. Um, yeah. animations will get the track mode, basically. I'm sure that's probably what it's called internally. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> By the way, I blame you we because get this thing? when I first installed Windows 11 on this machine, my widgets yeah. were useful news. It was good stuff. I didn't click on any you of it because I, I was nervous. A... So now, <laughs> number one, my second husband of five years would like to inherit part of my home as he pay. Okay. Uh, here's a, here's a, a celebrity mugshots article from, from Wonderwall. That's exciting. Yeah. This, these are, this, this, this is above the fold. California coastal destination is the most popular road trip in the world, <laughs> insurance study says. All right, so yeah. here's two two little tips about the widget bar. Widget, actually, it's, what's the term? The widget board is the little the literal name of this thing. You the things that are news stories are not widgets. Those are cards. They're from content sources. They're cards. News sources. Yes, they're news cards. and entertainment sources. Yeah. Um, you can do two things. Um, well, actually, three things. You can add widgets to it. So widgets are the things that will go at the top, like oh, weather, stocks, That's the plus sports, button whatever. when it says plus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's right. You can So that will so push some of that weather, nonsense down. That's nice. Yeah. Right? Okay. That's one. Photos. You could also go, you, yeah. you could spend the time to go through each of these cards and, and you find one where you're like, well, this is terrible. This is a little dot, dot, dot thing. You click that and you say, hide stories from this news source, like People Magazine, you might not want, whatever. Yeah, yeah, Show yeah. Show fewer stories like this. Oh, this is it's much actually better. The best th this is much better. Yeah. I'm liking this. The best yeah. thing you can do is click on something called Manage Interests and it goes up to the web and that, because this is all MSN, blah, 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 whatever. And there's an interesting thing, you know, when you sign up for like a music uh, streaming service, one of the first things you do is go through a wizard and it says, show us which artists you like. And it, you know, kind of formulates feeds based on your interests. There's a tune your feed feature where instead of going through individual, you know, things one at a time, it will, it will say, hey, show us some of the things you like. Yeah. And then if you, if you actually take the time to do this, the, the feed isn't as terrible as it is in the beginning when it shows the kind of stuff that you're seeing. So I can get rid of Cleveland Baseball Insider? I think that's probably, I don't <laughs> well, know. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't. But Fewer you, but, stories yeah. like this or a completely you know hide but, stories if I want. But now me. you'll right. get that's Columbus right. Cider and <laughs> blow it up. Like, I feel like this right. thing doesn't work. The custom thing doesn't work. It, it so just, actually, I, it's, oh yeah, wait a minute. They replaced it with again. something called Roto Baller. It's like Instagram. It actually <laughs> does work a lot better than it used to. It, does? it used to be terrible. Yeah, oh, it really does. It used to not even take stuff away. Wait, it would just give you the exact right. same story from a different source, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. No, yeah. it's got it has gotten a lot better. It really is has. It? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good to hear. MLB World Relax re reacts to Fernando Tatis Jr.'s bobblehead news. Hey, mm. I can't live without bobblehead news. How, how was that not the top story in the New York Times today? <laughs> the know. You know what I did? Oh, see, here's what I went wrong. Okay. So it was giving me the Kansas City Royals versus the Minnesota Twins score in the top left corner sure. sure don't care about either of those so i thought customize this widget the only choice it really gives me is uh mlb oh i selected mlb and what i really care about is the giants the giants or what, yeah yes let me add them instead and now i'll see oh now i'm seeing the giants score okay so it just but they but you know what nobody ever wants to, to do this either that's the other problem with this well, like I said, though, it, it's not – you could do it in a way that doesn't take a lot of time because, it, really, it's tedious to go story by story and say no, yeah. no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. But if you do that, there's a little wizard on the web that I'll actually do that. works yeah. pretty well. This is – you know what? This is definitely from the mobile phone experience. This is yeah, – this, this is, is – Well, it's a – I, I, I spend most of my time on my phone when I read, like, looking at feeds, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that, you know, Microsoft sees that engagement and they want, like yeah. we've been saying, wants this thing yeah. to be more like a mobile platform. Well, we'll, mm -hmm. put, we'll put a few in there. I, I don't mind it so much as long as it's hidden behind. And my, uh, the top widget is uh, is the weather. And so it's hidden behind the right. weather. Is that, that's the default? Is that normal? Yeah, but you, yeah, it is. And if you, you can customize that. So for example, like when I come to Mexico, it changes it to Mexico. Oh, nice. If I okay. always wanted it to be back home, you can configure it to do that. That will impact the display you see in the taskbar of the forecast, right? It won't always show you here unless that's what you want. Hmm. Um, it's not, you know, it's, 
It's not 100 percent terrible. <laughs> it was yeah about a year ago. It was 100 yeah. percent terrible. It's just 70 percent terrible now. Yeah. So you know, progress. okay. Yeah, I'm adding some. I think a lot know. of people are like me. Like they remember they tried it. It didn't customize. Yeah, so they're just like I give up. Eh, it doesn't work. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> well, I mean, it was terrible in the beginning. My God, uh, it was very terrible. All of the top not stories were like celebrity <laughs> wearing next to nothing. You know, from yeah. some pop sugar yeah. or some whatever terrible yeah. sites. Yeah. Um, but it's gotten like I said, it's gotten better. Okay. All right. Okay. I still turn it off. I don't care. I don't want this. I'm working on my computer. I'm not like, I don't, Same. you know, no, I don't even care about the weather when I work. I'm just working. Oh, That's I like better. it. It's just a, you know, and I don't, yeah. you know, the only thing that bugs me is if I move my accent, I move my mouse to the lower left, it will right. pop up and. Yep. I would love to turn that off. Yeah. You got to make things explicit. You know, I, yeah. you, you, you yeah. want to click on it to make it happen, obviously. Also, it's a little unintuitive about, you know, how it works. So. That. If only someone would write a book about this. Oh, hey, where could I <laughs> find a such a thing? <gasps> Something like a podcast. Yeah, right. So great. Windows. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> widgets. Yeah, I don't know, like, a widgets what would you call it? Eventually. Hands-on widgets? I don't know. <laughs> Paul's right. hands-on windows. Is that windows. acronym taken yet? No. Yes. <laughs> hands-on windows. How? Uh, so Rachi's doing pause on windows. He's he's signed up. Pow. Pow. <laughs> Uh, Paul's uh, hands on windows is normally hidden behind a paywall in the club, but we're going to do a public version of the uh, Windows shortcuts that you did. So that's coming out this week. So everybody get to see that on the YouTube channel on uh, youtube.com. The YouTubes? On the tubes. If, and if you like it, you can either subscribe to Hands on Windows by itself for two ninety nine, or join Club Twit for $7, six ninety nine a month. And... Uh, You'll get that and all of the shows ad free plus hands on Mac. You probably don't care about that so much. Uh, no. You probably care even less about the Untitled Linux show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Stacy's Book Club. You might enjoy that. There's a. You know what though? I think people need to stay abreast of things yes. that they don't use or like, and that's true of not just of tech. I mean, I yeah. think one of the problems with this widgets thing and life in general today is that you can. Tune it down just to the baloney that you believe, <laughs> you know, and don't get to see what's going on in the whole world. I the think it's important to filter it. bubble problem. Yeah, I want yeah. My it's own a big baloney. problem. I don't want any other baloney. My baloney. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone does. That's and and it's yeah. it's very. Did you see? By the way, very common. There's a big black market in Mexican baloney in the U.S. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> no. No. So Paul. Ch it's, I'm coming it's home with a, a, a suitcase full of baloney. I think it's Leo, called Chimex. <laughs> It's a Mexican bologna. You can get it down there for like eight dollars a, th you know, a mm -hmm. tube, like a sure. big thing, and sell it for eighty dollars up here because it's like oh. it's it's banned. Okay, but my flight costs eight hundred dollars. So how am I making? <laughs> Bring money? ten of them. He's taking notes right now. I can see. They <laughs> they uh, they stopped yeah. recently. They stopped a Volkswagen with like five hundred pounds of Mexican bologna. <laughs> You know what would be good is you could you could form the baloney into the shape of a person and then you use the HOV lane to get in more quickly. This is from TexasMonthly.com. Why are border smugglers trafficking baloney? Tons of contraband lunch meat has been seized at the U.S.-Mexico border. So um, I, I have no... Find, uh, go out and find, <laughs> let me get the name. Baloney. A it's chub. the new avocado. A chub. The, uh, they call it a chub of baloney because <laughs> it's kind of chubby. Yep. If yep. You'll, you'll face a fine of $1,000 or more if caught. But in Mexico, a nine-pound roll of Chimex, the most popular brand of smuggled chubs, costs 10 to $15 in the U.S., the same roll, $80 to $120. Mm. I'm just saying, Paul. It's because of the pork, right? That's yes. Why they, you're not supposed to and the U.S. Money. bans yeah. it because, you know, yeah. mad cow disease and stuff like that. Yeah. Don't, you know. What but about you, tofu bologna? What's wrong with this, guys? Well, I'm just saying, in. Paul, have you had any bologna in Mexico? I have not. I've had good food. <laughs> Bologna's <laughs> good food. Speaking of good food, Leo, look. Oh, what's that? I got, I, I got an aguas frescas. <gasps> what flavor is that? Is that a horchata? Is that a pineapple? What flavor is that? Cant cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Oh, it's so yeah. good. Look how frothy that Sounds is. Good. I'm so jealous. A cubic ton of cantaloupe. That and a smuggled <laughs> chub, and you got lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Sit on the stairs downstairs, and <laughs> you got watch the lunch. Go by. 
I just thought I'd. There's a website called Taco Literacy you might want to check out that has the whole inside story on smuggled chubs. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. You're just welcome. Just in case you want to know. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, uh, how long have we been doing this? You know what? I should probably I do an ad right now. <laughs> I feel like we've been doing this a long time. I and feel the, that way every day. And the only way we can break it up is by telling you about our fabulous sponsor, ClickUp. How would you, what would it be worth to you if you could save a day a week? You know, like get it back. Like instead of a five-day week, you'd have a four-day week. That'd be, that'd be pretty darn good, wouldn't it? You'd love that, wouldn't you? Well, I can tell you how you can do that. Guaranteed with ClickUp. More time to cook healthy meals like fried bologna sandwiches. You could work on your on your novel. You could binge some, you know, good reality TV. I would just sleep. <laughs> I would just take the extra time and sleep. ClickUp is the productivity platform that'll save you one day of work a week, guaranteed. ClickUp actually was created to scratch all the best uh, software is to scratch an itch. Like, so the developer said, wait a minute, I need this. I, I'm going to write it. And of course, it grew from there. It began with the premise that productivity just simply broken. Too many tools, you know, too many apps to launch, too many tabs in your browser, too many things in entirely separate ecosystems. There has to be a better way to get through the daily hustle, and that's ClickUp. ClickUp is the one tool to house all your tasks, all your projects, your docs, your goals, your spreadsheets, and more. It's ClickUp is for teams, of course, but the team could be you, just you, one person, thousand plus person, doesn't matter. And ClickUp, it, I like this because it comes out of the box ready to go, but you can also customize it for the job you're doing and then have a did. There are many, many customization options. So, in fact, features and customization, customization options no other tool has. So you can just make it exactly the way you want, whether you're in project management, in engineering, in sales, in marketing. In HR, whatever you do, ClickUp has easy-to-use solutions that create a more efficient work environment. Now, you might say, well, I, you know, okay, does anybody use this? Yeah, 800,000 highly productive teams use ClickUp today. That's like saving 800,000 days a week. That's impressive, right? Use the code WINDOWS to get 15% off ClickUp's massive unlimited plan for not just for the first month, but for the whole year. That's a great way to do this. You could start reclaiming your time for under $5 a month. Right now, clickup.com. Use the code WINDOWS. Don't delay. This offer will not last long. 15% off ClickUp's massive unlimited plan for the whole first year. Clickup.com. And don't forget the offer code WINDOWS because that's how you tell them you heard it here. And that benefits Paul and Mary Jo. ClickUp. Thank you, ClickUp. What are you laughing? You're laughing at my click up? Click up. Click up. <laughs> uh, new build heads to the dev channel. Did it, did it, did it. Yeah, that one's not too exciting. So it's all <laughs> bug fixes, right? Are but you saying what has preceded update. this is exciting? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> hey, we had a we had an engrossing conversation. On widgets. Yeah. 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 Um, there are two app updates going no, out to the dev thing, channel. Though, there's yes. one thing you should care about in this. Right? Yes. What's it? Linux? The store thing. Oh. Oh, no. See, I actually, uh, let me get to that because I'm, I'm, this one. Oh, okay. I don't even, okay. I don't even get it. So there are two app store updates. I'm sorry. There are two app updates, neither of which make any sense to me. <laughs> so the first is to the, well, I'd love, I'd love, listen, I, I write books about Windows and I don't even know what this app is for. <laughs> okay. Uh -oh. There's a, there's a, there's a camera app. Okay. Yeah. And some computers have privacy shields on their webcams, yes. either manual or yes. electronic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now it will pop up a little thing that says, hey, you, you, no one can see you because of your privacy shield. Well, don't shield. you know that because okay. it's black? Yeah, well, I would think so. But who? what do you use the camera app for? What What, what exactly are you doing with it? If, if the, the, <laughs> the, the privacy shutter is on the camera that looks at you. Yeah. Some computers still have like the world-facing camera. But, although, by the way, mm. you don't see those anymore. So what are we using the webcam for? What exactly is the? Oh sorry, yeah, the I see. There's for? an app called Camera. But why? <laughs> like, what would you use this for? I guess you could make a little selfies. Video of yourself or something. Yeah, selfies yeah. on a, on a computer. 
You know what I use it for? Because it come, uh, Apple has for years shipped something called Photo Booth, which is just yeah. a, a dumb thing you give to kids that lets them do fancy, crazy photos. But I always use it yep. to test my camera, right? Right. Right. Okay. right? That's, what, well, that's what this is for. Yeah. All right. Well, this is is about as exciting as the video player app or whatever the, the media player app. It's like I, I okay, I, I, I get that it's in Windows, but it's easy to write. Remember. They wrote it in three minutes. It was very yeah. simple, you know. Yes, exactly. It does uh, have though. Yeah. I'm noting on this, and maybe this is again the mobilefication of of the desktop. It is. That's but, what I was thinking. But I yeah. see <laughs> also an icon for flipping the camera around, like you have a front facing yeah. camera. Well. Right and and does any laptop while, have those, a front facing camera? They, that was yeah they did and now you, they don't. So this used to be a thing, especially on two and one computers. We could flip the lid around, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. the world facing cameras. Remember Microsoft went on their little three D thing for three or four years there in Windows ten. You could use yeah. those cameras to scan in a three D object and then use it in three D Paint or whatever you're doing in three D. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's all gone. You really don't see those anymore. Yeah. So I don't, I, there, the camera app, there are is, people on, I don't know. There are people on Discord saying they use the camera app um, to test the camera before they do a Zoom yeah. or a team. Yeah, that's what we just said. Like that, right? yeah. 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 That's, that's okay. what, so there's more in other than words, one person saying this. So yeah. a lot of people It's the internet explorer of cameras. <laughs> yeah. You use it to, to, <laughs> to launch I, the I other use program. The, I use the browser to download yeah. Chrome. Yeah. You use camera yeah. to test your camera before you actually use it yeah. with an app you want to use. Okay. Perfect. Great. Sounds like a Brilliant. great app. They definitely update update that for sure. <laughs> so the the <laughs> like what? Okay, excellent, excellent. The store app, the store app, uh, the store app. Yeah, the store app actually update. The store, hell, let me try that in English. The Start store over. app update makes no sense to me. So what do they do it with says, that? It says, it's a, first of all, you can view app screenshots from search results. Okay, great, that's fine, not a big deal. It says the ability to install games directly from the store, without having to switch apps what right. does that mean what is it what is it what what does that mean where if am i a yeah From wait a minute if where you're getting I? a game right yeah From how do where? you do it now can you go through the store oh you open the store that's what it is and you so let's say you've got linux for windows the linux subsystem open and you want to okay. download a new linux you could probably just do it without exiting the, you don't have to open the store. Just say, I want that. Games, sometimes they'll do that. They put DL, DLC in the store. Um, in fact, but, my uh, my uh, my Alienware has apps in the store. All right, so I'm sorry. I, I just, I'm just parsing a sentence here. I don't understand the, the <laughs> English of this. I, I can install games directly from the store, period. Makes sense. I can do that right now. Yes. Then it says, without having to switch apps. Yes, without having Where to go into I the store. Where no, are you? You're in where, the game. What does that even Instead mean? of so using you say, the okay. Xbox app, doesn't that isn't that what it means? Instead of using the Xbox app, no. It doesn't, but it doesn't say the Xbox app. That's my point. I don't understand where I am, where I don't have to switch yeah. up. In other words, I can download something from the store without having to switch apps to the store or from the store. What is to it? the I, store? And where? So okay, so is where? it not the case that some apps will be uh, some games will be uh, offer DLC or something in the store? And they'll say it's well, in the store. I don't know about that, that seems like that would be in the game. But no, I think I it's happened saying, to me I'm, where you're I'm in an app. World, I'm out in the world, and I'm like, I would like to download a game from the store, but you know what I don't want to do? <laughs> Switch to the store. What? <laughs> oh, what? What is this? Uh, oh, oh, oh I got I, it. I, you're in the beautiful Microsoft Edge browser. You're on mm -hmm. the Stray website, ready to download mm -hmm. that fabulous game. Well, Stray's not in the store, but something that's okay. in the store. Yep, yeah. fair enough. Hitman. Yep. And it says, want to install it? You say yes. You press the button. Instead of launching the store, which is confusing, it just downloads mm -hmm. it. I love it. By the way, you know, the sentence that would have made that made sense without having to switch from the web browser you're viewing currently. But it's not just a web it browser. It could be other things, well, too. Where else would you see this? <laughs> like uh, in, other app, in apps that uh, I, I have to think there are apps like, okay, I got another one, a photo editing mm -hmm. app that offers in the store filters. You're in the photo editing app. It says, do you want our additional filters? You say yes. Now it's confusing for the user. Suddenly you're in the Microsoft it says store. Games. It literally specifically says games, but then it doesn't say where you are, where you might have to switch apps. It, it, I'm saying this is poorly written. This kind of goes back to the communications thing that we keep talking about. Yeah, it's not about. well written. It's not clear. It's not clear it's where not clear. I am. Well, I'm going to be in a place where I, 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 I could down, I, I want to download a game. And it's not making me switch to the store app to download the game. It's going to download from the store, I would imagine, in the background. I have to imagine that because it 
Well, no, it does say that, I guess. I this just don't understand like where I would be. This is the least of the problems <laughs> in the Microsoft store. I, I'm, not, yes. I, well, I, I'm not saying it's a big problem. What I'm saying is both of these app updates to me didn't make sense. And they still don't make sense. So I'll give you an example that really bugged the hell out of me. Yes. I like when I install Windows to install the Bing wallpaper, right? Because then I get right. a new okay. wallpaper every day. So I go to the store and I search literally Bing wallpaper. Now you would think Microsoft, which owns Bing wallpaper and gives it away free, would stop mm -hmm. the daily wallpaper from Bing for a buck forty nine app. Yeah. Yes. Why is That's true? Oh, it says this app is a better alternative to the classic Microsoft Bing desktop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's better for the it's author. Better for the, the author. And then it has, yeah. and then it, and oh, this is really ridiculous. And then it says. It has the following features not found in the original one. And then it has just a button that says personalization. Okay. <laughs> By the way, it's got six ratings, uh, all one star, because it's a buck forty nine for something Microsoft gives you for free. But why does Microsoft allow that in their store as one of the top search results for Bing wallpaper? Yeah. That's wrong. Yeah. In fact... None of the top one, two, three, four, five, twelve results are the actual Bing wallpaper. <laughs> well, number twelve is the Edge browser. That's the first Microsoft <laughs> app. Interesting. Uh, Bing fan favorites, landscapes, lively wallpaper, daily lock screen and wallpaper, but the Bing wallpaper, nope. In fact, I guess this is not where you get it. Right. Anyway, that always drives me crazy. I always forget. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the store is another example of an app that has legitimately improved a lot over the years, but is it's, mm -hmm. it's still dogged by its low quality beginnings. Um, yeah. And they, yeah. You know, I mean, and I understand these things are so big that, that they're, you know, they're not enough people to hire to fix yeah. it, but. They have 185,000 employees. I mean, throw <laughs> two or three people at it at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They do. Yeah. Yep. All right, moving right along in the, as the <laughs> eternal spring continues. Sure. Microsoft shuts down Windows Insider Enterprise test bed. Now where are you yeah. going to take a nap? Exactly. Well, <laughs> well, um, there was this thing they had called the uh, Olympia Corp. I don't know if anybody listening remembers this, but... They set up a site for enterprises who wanted to test enterprise features of Windows 10 before they actually started implementing them. Um, and they could run it in this kind of like a Windows Insider Enterprise Lab. So that's what it, the first name of it was. And they then they changed the name to Olympia Corp. So th this was back in like 2017, 2018, right? I have no idea how many people ever used this or didn't use it. But this week they started sending out notes to people and saying, hey, we're shutting this down. Um, and get all your stuff out of it quickly if you have anything in there because we're going to shut it down on September 12th. So when I contacted Microsoft about this and I said, so um, what's, why, why are you guys doing this? And, and um, is, does this have any implications for what you're doing with the Windows Insider for Business program? You know what they said? Paul can guess this. Did they say tomorrow oh, belongs to those who embrace it today? No, that's they our said, new tagline. Did we announce something that. like that? We, we didn't even know this was happening. No, even better. We have nothing to share at this time. Uh, of course I'm, they did. I'm like, you're sending this note out to companies. Like, <laughs> we have nothing to share. I'm like, you, no, it's not, I'm not asking you to share anything. Like, you're already sharing this, right? It's when you're telling people it's shutting down. <laughs> we don't know why. No, so my one one of my uh, the person who tipped me to this uh, originally, who I named in my article, said, "You know, I just I, I wonder if it's because they're doing a lot of other new programs to do simulations for Windows 11. And yes, this past year they've been introducing a lot of new programs to try to get businesses to try out Windows 11. They have this thing that shows you how similar Windows 11 is to Windows 10, and then there's these." Um, onboarding simulations, all kinds of things like that. They could have said that. They could have said, we have all these new, better things, right? But they didn't say that. Um, it could be because no one's using it. That's my guess. My guess is no one's using it. <laughs> I want to get one of those uh, staples buttons, you know, the, that was easy button, and I can you can reprogram yeah. them to say, 
We have nothing we to have share nothing at this to time. Share at this time. <laughs> <laughs> I just asked him for a comment on something else this afternoon. And I'm like, and the one answer you are not allowed to give me is we have nothing to share. That is, any, any other answer is good. Not that answer. <laughs> no comment sounds like you're guilty of something. I plead well, the fifth. We have nothing to again. share sounds like, yeah. okay, I'm not asking you to share. Just give me an answer. Right? <laughs> well, the implication is, well, we know, but we're not going to tell you. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And yeah, the, at this yeah. time is even more like yeah. unnerving because yeah. you're like, oh, so you're going right. to share it's later? Like, it's kind of withholding. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, I don't know. I wouldn't be too alarmist about them shutting this down, but it's also distressing that they aren't saying why. Just say it. no one used it. It's fine. Like, that's good. That's fine. Whatever. Now, can we then talk about the new never. look? Yeah. New yeah. CD net re refresh today. I just noticed this. Very pretty. Yes. How can you not notice it's it? It's lime green. <laughs> Tomorrow yes. belongs to those who embrace it today. Yes. It's a not so blocky fonts. <laughs> um, the ZDNet, I mean, sorry, CNET did the same kind of. Uh, they did. And I Two guess this ago. is, you know, this is all. Yeah. You're in the family still, yes? We are. Yeah. Yes, we are. Uh, I like, though, uh, the picture of you. Very nice. And okay. I, I've i never you know, known that you're. that picture of me? I do. Chris Marquardt, do. right? Ant. Oh, Ant did. did that picture. It's yeah. in the studio, yeah. Yep. Uh, and it says you're a senior contributing editor. I should add that to your lower third. I didn't, mm, I didn't know cares. that was your title. Title Schmeidel. Title yeah, Schmeidel. I <laughs> but I do like, I mean, it's a very, it's a nice, clear, clean layout, I have to it's say. It's very clean. Yeah. It is. This I is, do like the fonts. They're going modern. Yeah, they're yeah. going modern. We got rid of the red. We left the red for Windows Weekly, and we went away from red. Isn't that hysterical? Do you color. think that's because of us? <laughs> Definitely. No, I have not. No um, <laughs> are you still owned by Red Ventures, though? Yes, or, or we you, are. Or so, did they sell you to Lime Green Ventures? They did not. Right. Okay. <laughs> At least as far as I know. Wasn't, wasn't there a Lime Green like bike rental company? Yeah, Lime. Company? They went yes. out, I hate oh, to say lime. it, but they went bankrupt they just went the other day. They went out of business. Let's, yeah. Right. Let's hope we're not going to because no. we're using No, them. no, no. I like, you know what? I actually, I like this a little bit better than I like the CNET uh, redesign. I think this is pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a new look. It's it's they've changed since we got bought by Red Ventures. They've kind of changed how they're focusing ZDNet, and they're trying to show it's a new day. Right. So, mm. yeah. I, okay, this is uh, nitpicking. Mm, well, is it the logo? Tomorrow belongs to those who embrace it today. I like the idea, but it's yeah. a little reminiscent of the Nazi song "Tomorrow Belongs to Me." You. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not what we were shooting I'm for. I'm just going to mention that. Do with it what you want. I know you're not responsible okay. for it. I am not. No. Mm. Uh, geez. It's uh, what was the you other one? It? Work will set you free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you, uh, by you the could way, use empowering people to blah, blah, blah. You borrow from Microsoft. We could do that. Yeah. There you go. It, the only reason I know this is because uh, in the movie Cabaret, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the little Aryan guy, sings this mm -hmm. uh, song and they all start in the beer garden and they all start singing this. And so when I hear tomorrow belongs to, I think, <laughs> I think of that. All right. right. You, you got to tell Jason Heiner. He's our EIC. So, so actually, I don't think, know. actually, I'm going to take it back. I guess it's not historically. Okay. Wikipedia says actually the Nazis did not sing it. It is, it is from the Broadway musical from the Cabaret. Movie Cabaret. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, it was written by uh, Cantor and Ebb, actually. <laughs> so uh, ne never mind. Uh, it's never okay. Mind. It's okay. It's uh, yeah. it's from Cabaret. So. Yes. Okay. Anyway, moving okay. right along. Yeah. I didn't mean to rain no, on your no. parade, uh, but no, it's good. I think it's good that I like the redesign. <laughs> I do. Re I do really like the redesign. I've already gotten a lot of hate mail about the redesign. No, I disagree. Like, you know what? It'll be fine. I was not crazy okay. about CNET. <laughs> yeah. I think this is much nicer. I, I, uh, I made the comparison to Pentium with her earlier where, I, you know, yeah. it's jarring and it's new oh, and it it's unfamiliar. Yeah, and then normal. in a little while, like, yeah. oh, it's fine. But I, you know what I yeah. really like <laughs> is the breadcrumbs. So this slash yeah. that you're doing yeah. is actually mm -hmm. makes sense because you can use the breadcrumbs to go to different parts right. of the... Mm -hmm. site. Right. I think that's actually yep. very that's clever. I like that. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I like I like the design. I think I think it was way overdue time for ZDNet to get a new design. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh, I agree. Jason Heiner. God bless you. Yeah. 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 Um, so he's like he's like uh, editor in chief now. Huh? He is. He's a good. Mm -hmm. Good man. Yep. Really, really good. 
That's right. I think I, I talked about that one with him when he took when he got that job. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, let's do a Microsoft 365 segment because the world well, is crying speaking out. of redesigns, Leo. Yes. <laughs> if you ever want to see community of people react violently to the smallest change imaginable, then I will point you to the coming update to Oleg for the Desktop, <laughs> which is yeah. it's such a goofy thing to have to even try to explain this. But uh, Oleg is a multi-pane experience, so to speak. It's a navigation bar. There's like the, bar, you know, if you're looking at mail anyway, um, you know, the list of your emails will be in there and then the reading view on the side. And there are these things on the sides as well. You know, you can get to different parts of Outlook. So <laughs> to date, if you wanted to get to the calendar, the contacts with other, other modules, there's a little bar at the bottom, but they're moving it to the side because they want Outlook to be consistent with the other versions of Outlook, of which there are many. It's logical. That's fair. Yep. Yeah. Everyone who uses Outlook hates that. Oh. <laughs> and it may literally be everyone. Oh. It's a change. People let people hate it. Like, it's just because it's a change, right? That's why. Yeah. That's it. Outlook is a lot like Windows 11, where it's this really complex thing underneath, and they're trying to make it look yeah. simpler and there. a little prettier. And, you know, they've been doing mm -hmm. this for a few years now. It looks, honestly, yeah. it looks okay to my eyes. Mm -hmm. it, it's, but it's this really big, mm -hmm. complex beast of an application. Um, I, I don't know <laughs> if I, if I were to write something like the outlook field guide, for example, I would probably advise people that there's a keyboard shortcut you can use to get to those components, the modules or whatever they're called. And maybe, uh, just don't worry about where they are on the screen, but you know, yeah. they don't use outlook. So, yeah. huh? Weird. Huh? <laughs> but people are freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. Are. Well, again, yeah. this is any change. That's yep. what's going to happen. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep just normal yeah and i don't have a link to this next one but i wanted to ask mary joe especially because you would receive these kinds of support calls on twitter but have you been hearing lately from people who are seeing ads in outlook mobile yes so here's the thing <laughs> this is not this is not a new feature um ads have been in outlook mobile for i think a year or two now um but what i i just today i had someone give me a little bit of maybe insight into this because um, someone emailed me and said, Hey, I'm seeing ads. What's going on? Like, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you shouldn't be seeing ads if you pay for a Microsoft 365 account. The ads are for people who don't pay. And then he looked at his app and he said, Oh, he goes, that's interesting. I guess I got signed out and he signed in and the ad went away. Oh, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So I'm huh. curious if I you've didn't heard that. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I looked it up. I, I had a story. I want to say it was a year and a half ago ish or someone had a story on my site, it was either me or someone else, but about this topic that Microsoft admitted they were going to be adding ads to Outlook, mm. uh, make it ad supported. If you, you know, if you don't pay for the account and yeah. I don't know, I guess it's reasonably acceptable, right. but, I, but I feel like I've seen a lot of complaints about this lately on Twitter. Um, I think um, there's more ads being introduced in more places now. Like I think, I okay. forget. Somebody showed me Excel online, I believe, like the web version oh, with of Excel. Oh, ads in it, really? Yeah. There was a tiny ad, like in between the, oh, the, the yes, uh, yes, toolbar yes, yes. and, you know, yep. it was squished in just like small words. The thing that's driving people the most crazy is they already own a product that Microsoft has and then they show them an ad for it. Right? Yeah. And they're like, that, that's annoying. you know, these guys have AI, right? Like, why don't they know I'm running Office 365 and they're showing me an ad for Office 365, right? That's what people I, are getting mad about. I send feedback to Google every single day because I use Google News, and I'd like to know why a story about botany is in the technology section. And with all your AI prowess, how could you possibly not know this isn't a technology story? Well, it's science. <laughs> or what? Okay, but now if they had the, I mean, if they had smuggled chubs of baloney in there, that, <laughs> that would be a Might problem. Maybe a little more questionable. Five digital right. tools that will help you better <laughs> smuggle chubs in, from Mexico. Yeah. Uh, now, people are people are just seeing ads more. I feel like, and like I think somebody shared with you and I on Twitter a, a startup screen on Windows 11 that had a huge Xbox ad on it. Didn't you? Were you on that yep. thread where the guy yeah, was just like, "This is a no." That's not like, good. This is an absolute no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, Microsoft is Microsoft will not call these ads. By the way, right? These right. are suggestions or there's some other yep. term. Suggestions. I think the yep. thing in uh, Excel you were talking about is probably called an information bar, right? They they will argue that they want you to get more value out of the product you're using. Yeah. 
I will argue that you, if you're going to do something like this to someone who's paying for that product, because I see those ads as well sometimes in office, um, you need to give me an explicit way out. You know, yeah. uh, I don't ever want to yeah. see this thing again. And I don't yeah. ever want to see this thing again, ever. Um, but yeah, so I, these are those little used thin, normally the yellow, bar thin the layout, yellow bars, yeah. but the Xbox one was yeah. big. It was, it was full big. screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not. A so it was like sign up for but, Xbox, blah, blah, blah. Right? Hey, look, like, <laughs> even folks, even Apple is going to get more into advertising. This is seen as the way yeah. of the future when with everyone moving to subscriptions. We're trying to figure out this. How do we make money on? Yeah. Well, not everyone with with every, all companies moving to subscriptions. Mm-hmm. How do we make money from people who aren't um, right. paying? And, right. and th- we're going to do it the same way we do it on the web, which is to use ads. And mm-hmm. if you've ever used like Outlook.com, for example, and you don't pay for a Microsoft 365 account, that thing's yeah. full of ads. You know, it's terrible. Yeah. And I I do pay, so I don't really see these things. But every once in a while, when I use a secondary account, maybe for the book or something, I'll bring up Outlook.com, especially. And you're like, what is what is this thing? Like, do people actually use this? Um, oh, you know what? And, if you run an ad blocker and you bring up Outlook.com, mm-hmm. you might only see one ad. I bet it doesn't block ads. the ads because okay. it's first party and it doesn't. It's not I think like I an see ad. Fewer and, ads. I think that's I only right. see you like can implement, one ad when I do it. Yeah. We, so if it comes from a different ads, server, you can site. block it. Yeah. I mean, right. Yeah. yeah. But you can make it look like part of the UI if you're if right. you own it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I understand why you'd put an ad in a web in a free web product. I mean, that's me too. Not, that doesn't I agree. surprise I, me. I think you just have to accept that. Like you're getting it for free, so you get an ad. Okay, but when you're paying yeah. for something and then you get an ad that's for exactly the product right. you're paying for, that's yep. a little different. Big problem. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Yeah. I agree. All right, uh, let's take a little break, and then uh, we're going to talk. Oh, developers, developers, developers! Oh, yeah. In just a little bit. So excited. You know how much I I love developers. Uh, Mobile, and yes, there's an Xbox bit. Um, And there's the back of the book, too. There's lots of stuff still to come. We're just getting started here, all you dozers. You hang in there as we talk a little bit about our sponsor for this segment of Windows Weekly, InfraScale. InfraScale. Uh... I don't have to tell you the statistics for ransomware attacks are (laughs) alarming would be an understatement. Terrifying. If you run a business as I do, you're running scared. I mean, every time I come into work, I say, are we safe? (laughs) What are we doing? According to uh, betanews.com, cyber criminals have the capability of penetrating up to 93% of company networks. It, with social engineering, of course, and, and exploits and, you know, phishing. And it's not just large organizations. No, no. 46% of small and medium-sized businesses have been have been victims of ransomware attacks. That's worth saying again. Nearly half of SMBs have been victimized. Okay. What's the best way to mitigate a ransomware attack? Having a good backup. Because the first thing they do is encrypt all your data. And I always ask myself... Why don't these companies have good backups? Well, it's not as easy as said as done because the bad guys, once they penetrate the network, will often look and find out where your backups are and short circuit that or encrypt those as well. That's why you need InfraScale Cloud Backup. It provides you the security you need to manage backups, secures them from hackers or any adverse events. So you can sleep easier at night knowing your company will never have to pay a ransom. Your data is safe. You can back up and protect everything, including SaaS applications, endpoints, complete backup, servers, of course. You can execute disaster recovery locally, but you can even do it in the cloud. In fact, that's something we've been starting to work on here so that if, what if your business burned down? All the servers, everything got destroyed, but you could get back up and running in minutes in the cloud. Wouldn't that be awesome? Every company needs a secure endpoint data protection solution. It's got to be easy to install. Yes, got to be easy to manage. InfraScale offers this. They integrate with Hyper-V and VMware. You can do site-to-site failover with orchestration in the InfraScale cloud. So you can get back up and running fast even on another in another premise. Keep hackers away. And here's how. And this is the big word to remember. Immutability immutability is the core of how their product is designed your data in the cloud is not only encrypted it cannot be altered 
Even in storage, it's encrypted and unalterable, immutable. That's the key. With infrastructure backup and disaster recovery, you're going to be ready for whatever comes your way. Server crash, human error, natural disaster, or malicious activity. Bad guys. Gartner says the average cost, and this is also important, the average cost of downtime caused by a local or site-wide incident, whatever causes it across all industry sectors, is $5,600 per minute. Per minute, $330,000 an hour. So it stands to reason the faster you can get back up and running, the less money you're going to lose. Clients and partners alike, including MSPs and VARs, use InfraScale, trust InfraScale, backup and recovery solutions to keep their businesses running, to eliminate downtime, to eliminate data loss. It's the most cost-effective enterprise-grade data protection solution, just right for an SMB as well as a big enterprise. No wonder more than 65,000 companies use InfraScale. If disaster strikes, your applications, your data, your systems are recovered and available in record time. Because remember, every minute counts. Their award-winning, world-class supports always there to ensure your business is protected 24-7. And now, by the way, SSD with no extra charge. That's nice. Fast backup and restore. Whatever your data, whatever your environment, InfraScale provides continuity and resiliency for your business. Visit InfraScale.com slash twit. I-N-F-R-A-S-C-A-L-E. InfraScale.com slash twit. Sign up for a free demo. Find out everything you need to know to see how InfraScale protects your business today. Immutability. That's our word of the day. Visit InfraScale.com. Dot com slash twit. Please do that address so that they know you saw it here. I know you're smart. You can just go to infrascale.com. But if you put the slash twit, it helps us. Infrascale.com slash twit. They're there to help you. Back to uh, Paul and Mary Jo. And let's see here. What's next on the agenda? Let's talk Dev developers, box. developers, developers. Mary Jo, I can't see the term DevBox without seeing the term DonBox. And I think, is DevBox <laughs> DonBox's brother? It is. I take it DonBox right. was a uh, old Microsoft-y mm -hmm. back was. in the day. Yeah. Who now works for Meta? Uh, yeah. So I remember when they announced DevBox, <laughs> which was yep. a little confused at about at Build. Yep. So now uh, you can get it. Box. Well, yeah. It's because there's no box. It's in, yeah. It's like, what yeah. is this it's thing? It's in public preview now, right? So you can tr t kick the tires if you want to see if this would work for you. So DevBox is a pre-configured um, developer workstation in the cloud. It runs on top of Azure Virtual Desktop. So uh, there are all different sizes depending on the kind of job that you're going to work on. Four virtual CPUs, up to 32 virtual CPUs. Um, you get storage. You get um, compute. And then they also have a DevBox storage SSD SKU as well. Um, if you use Windows 365, the Microsoft Cloud PC service to manage your PCs, you can also use that to manage DevBox. Uh, and the idea is you would use DevBox in the cloud. Um, instead of taking the time to set up your own developer workstation, you'd go and it would be all ready for you all pre-configured set. Windows subsystem for Linux is on it. Android subsystem for Linux is on it. You can just use it and start building your app without having to take the time to first do set up all your infrastructure. So yeah, I, I think people are interested and they're like, yeah, that sounds good. But how much is it going to cost? We don't know. That's, <laughs> that's going to be the key. <laughs> I know. Uh, so and they also are not saying when it will be available to the mainstream, but during the test period, they're giving you a set number of hours to try it. Uh, for free. And then if you go beyond that, you do have to pay, even though it's in public preview. So yeah, yeah if you're interested, you can test it now. <clears throat> Paul <clears throat> should test this. I think you should test this. You're a dad. I will. I I mean, I, I use Visual Studio for very specific things. It's, I don't know. Hmm. It, it looks like they support all or at least most of the workloads that you would get if you installed this thing locally. And yeah, um, yeah, I, I guess, I don't know. I'm trying to understand the appeal of this. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I am too. Because, I, I mean, if you're a developer, you have hardware. Yeah, yeah. But maybe that's the point. So hardware, that some is. GPU hardware especially is hard to get and is expensive. Yep. I, Not anymore. Maybe this is like. <laughs> By the way, yeah, no, that, that was yeah. true at, at, during yeah. build. Yeah. It's completely well, reversed now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, in the same sense that you could take a pretty 
basic laptop and turn it into a gaming machine with a cloud gaming service. I guess you could do that with Visual Studio here. That maybe is, uh, is maybe this more for building um, web apps and SaaS applications? As no, it's the whole. It's the whole list of so any kind workload. of app, you could you right? could you could build Windows desktop apps with this if you wanted to. I well, I, who knows? I'm I'm not a developer, but. Boy, if I want to, yeah. and I'm sure Paul, you feel the same way. If I'm going to code, I'm going to sit down in an actual machine. Yep. Oh yeah. No, think, I'd like to code, but could I have a little latency every time I type? Yeah. <laughs> is know? it for pair programming more, or I mean, is it? No. Is it, no. no. <laughs> I think. I think. I feel like they, there are some things that programmers are doing now where the hardware is really expensive to get. Right. And, that, and must yeah. that must you know, be it. That must be. Like, say, say you want to create an. AI or an ML type app, right? And you're like, yeah, but I'm going to need this hardware and I'm going to need this much compute, this much storage. This will just be like, maybe. yeah, spin it up in the cloud and use it. That's that's kind of how I think about it. Maybe that's not yeah. the way. I don't know. But I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to take a look at it. I'm, I'm curious yeah. about it, but yeah, I'd like, you know, like Leo said, you want hardware, you know? Right. I mean, maybe there is, want to get like a, right. there's a very popular site called Repolit where you can use any language. It's a cloud, mm -hmm. but I think it's mostly for yeah. pair programming and, um, yeah. Uh, you know, collaboration and that kind of thing, as opposed to yeah. right. a yeah. team. I don't. I just, you know, well, Microsoft must know there's an audience for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I you know, you're you're a excited. developer. I, are you telling me the hard part yeah. of being a developer is configuring a computer? No. You know, like it just seems like kind of a weird. I don't know. Yeah. I guess if I you use lots of different environments. Um, yeah. Yeah. Multi this is meant to be support. any programming framework, any IDE, like you can use it. Oh, I guess, you want. yeah, you might have a bunch of them. That makes sense. Right. Maybe you've got, you know, a React yeah. machine and, you know, you've got, yeah. a, and maybe that's it, you know, a .NET machine. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess that would be useful. Yeah. And, and you know, I have to say, installing environments on a machine to do development can really screw up a machine. So I kind of understand yeah. that as well. Like, right. yeah. you set it all up to do this. Yeah. And then uh, I, I, uh, you got 18 I, different. I just feel uh, this would solve a problem for me because I use so many different laptops because I review laptops and you always forget yeah. something, right? You know, right. or you, yeah. you forget some configuration, but I, I don't think that's the case for most actual developers, right? Yeah. I mean, you kind of set this thing up exactly the way you want it and then you're good mm -hmm. for probably a couple of years. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. yeah everything's go. going to the cloud. It's funny because I'm the one who said that's the future, right? That the PCs are to the cloud. dead. Go, you know, you're going to be running <laughs> Windows in the cloud and all that. Uh, yeah. but the yeah. last thing I thought of that would happen is to developers. I understand if you're doing well, machine, you know, if you're doing training, the huge data sets and mm -hmm. and all this. Um, these See, actually what, don't have a huge I, amount of storage, which is weird. Yeah, much less than you would get uh, at home. Right, right. <laughs> so I don't really understand it. I'm a little nervous about a future where we have developers who are advanced in some language, in some environment, some framework, whatever it is, and have no idea how to configure a computer to use those things. Like, right. well, is that's this, not good. Is this yes. where we're, no. is this yeah, where we're heading? Yeah, I mean, right. that's I right. Know, yeah. It's interesting. Fascinating. Fascinating yeah. rhythm. Ba -da 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 -da. <laughs> um, just remember, tomorrow belongs to me. Okay. That's right. Yeah, baby. And my chubs. Microsoft and Canonical are bringing native .NET to Ubuntu. I saw this announcement. I thought that was cool. Yeah, it is cool. And they they also have kind of a fun little um, uh, lifecycle alignment where .NET, uh, long-term servicing versions of .NET are released every other November. So this year will be .NET 7, which is not an LTS release next November. Uh, will be an LTS release. And then Ubuntu ships their LTS versions the following April every year as well. So they kind of line up, and that way they can ensure that each version of Ubuntu LTS will ship with the, the long-term supported version of .NET as well. So it's the SDK, the runtime, ASP.NET Core. Uh, it's available in some, you probably know what this is, I don't, uh, chiseled Ubuntu containers, which I understand are... <laughs> I, know, I have no idea. Okay, small footprint containers. Basically. Oh, I thought it was just one with a good um, jawline. But I guess yeah, I know, I'm okay. sure it's that too. <laughs> but the, I think the thing that's neat about this is that they work together, Canonical and Microsoft, to make this happen. They've yeah, been, that's great. Uh, so, mm -hmm. Several month long project. Oh, you'd never, you know, and Linux is a cancer. Steve Ballmer said. Yeah, you'd never We've come think a long way, long baby. Way. Yeah, we sure <laughs> have. It's great. I mean, it's really good. Well, because these got these uh, two companies are actually now sharing their security uh, problem information with each other to ensure that if things are found on Ubuntu, it gets its way back to .NET six and vice versa. 
as quickly as possible. So yeah. they've really kind of streamlined that process. I, that, that's uh, rather astonishing to me. So mm-hmm. uh, it's a brave new world for sure. Right yeah. There. It's cool. It's very, very cool. Yeah. I have to say. Yeah, it's neat. And then um, Mary Jo forwarded this to me today because she knows I'm a, a Markdown language fanboy of sorts. Um, Microsoft, if you're familiar with Visual Studio Code, you know that it supports Markdown and you can install various extensions that make it better for, for you know different use cases. Um, someone at Microsoft got the idea and has said that, hey, maybe we should make a, a Markdown language server so we can take everything we've done in VS Code, all of the tool, not just the you know, language support and syntax highlighting, but actual all the tooling, the things that add you know, support for like document outlines, workplace symbols, smart selectors, completions, et cetera, et cetera. Just make it available to the world and we'll open source it. And so I don't know that this will be the primary use case, but, and they, but they do say this explicitly. If you want to write your own editor that supports Markdown, you can just use this. And you'll get 100% of what is in Visual Studio Code uh, for free. And also other Markdown uh, tools. So um, interesting. So I, I'm going to look at this. I, I, I did look at this briefly today, and I, I don't know how I would use this myself. But the idea of making a an ed- like a lightweight editor that was not plain text but was Markdown is super interesting to me because I still struggle to find... Uh, good tools that I want to use on Windows. So it's interesting. You're moving to Ubuntu? No. No, okay. I'm going to do that on Windows. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right. Let's do a little mobile stuff now. Yeah, just real quick. A couple of Android-related things happened this week. Um, I'm curious, Mary Jo, because Android 13 is available now on Pixels. Did you... Are you going to update your phone to Android 13? Me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should. But it's sure. like, yeah, yeah why not? Sure. it's it's not available uh, officially yet. It's still public. Yeah, public it's coming now, It is. Right? It's out? No, no, oh, this is? is, no, this is, yeah. For mainstream this was users, the, su- not for beta? Yeah, su- surprise. Oh. No, it's out of beta. That's the thing. Okay. Only on Pixels. Oh. Okay. So it will head oh, out to the I rest should. of the world. Right later yep. oh this is I, about a month earlier than oh, expected yeah, yeah usually they do oh, wow. with you know con commitment with the announcement of the next phone the right. pixel 7 but not oh. in this case huh they, yep. you know they were That's very far far along in the public beta you know the developer beta and public yeah. beta they yeah, were yeah. i think beta 6 was out so they must feel no, pretty I think confident. This is, I, don't have it yet. I don't have it yet the good you, news is really uh, i'm hearing very good things about it uh with battery life uh performance mm-hmm. um nice. so i think if you have a pixel yeah. Wow. I left I mine at home think, today. What a stupid day to leave yeah. mine at home. Darn it. Mine says it's already it on, up to date. It won't, it's yeah, it, okay. you haven't got it yet, but they're pushing it out. Yeah. I, think right. it's I, was, I, I was on the beta, and I did get it on both of the pixels I have. Um, okay. I was already using it, really. So I mean, starting today doesn't mean everybody's going to get it all at right, once, I guess. True. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, I, from a usability perspective, I think the big thing... Or the, well, the big thing you'll notice, well, maybe not Mary Jo, actually, is that material you uh, theming, uh, it now extends to third-party icons if you want it to. And there are, there are, in fact, a bunch of those now, which wasn't the case before. Um, so you get more of a kind of a cohesive-looking home, you know, home screen or whatever. But I don't know. Most For the most part, it's not um, it's really not that big of an update compared to, say, yeah. iOS 16, which is going to be a huge mm-hmm. update. Um, but, you know. That's fun. I, I I think it was just kind of exciting that it happened. Yeah. Um, the yeah. other thing that, the other thing, I Google for the first time sent me a phone to review. Oh, nice. So I got a Pixel 6a. Yeah, I was actually really excited about that because I can tell you spending a couple of thousand dollars every year on Google phones is not great. What's your um, um, What's your daily driver right now? It's been, this year it's been an iPhone 13 Pro. Okay. Um, so I those Instagram a, pictures are iPhone pictures mostly? No, I've been using, no, they're, they're all, those are all Pixel 6a. Oh, um, they look yeah, good. The only exception yeah. are the zoomed in photos from the soccer game, but the, the other photos are all 6a. Huh. Nice. So it's fantastic and it's a great value. The only thing I would just say kind of as a tip, I, I highly recommend this phone. It's, uh, you know, 449 great price. Because the Pixel 7 series is coming out, if, if you're interested mm-hmm. in these phones, the Pixel Six is on sale right now for four, what the hell of three no four ninety nine. So it's yeah, only it's fifty dollars more. Yeah. Honestly, for wireless charging, faster charging, the better camera system, and better IP rating, and probably some things I'm missing, slightly bigger screen, which I would actually appreciate. 
Um, I would spend the $50 right now while it's on sale and get that instead. But honestly, this is not like previous A-series phones because it's not using a, a mid-level processor. So it will, it will last probably three to five years, depending on how you use it. Um, Plus, you get updates. Nice, They're nice. going to keep those updates going. Yeah, I think it's three years of version updates, one of which just came out this week, um, and five years of security updates, yeah. if I remember. Yeah. Uh, this expo, you know, I've been looking at your uh, Instagram pictures, and especially the one mm -hmm. of Mark, the kind of the portrait of Mark, and it looked, I thought, well, that looks really good. Yep. Um, that explains it. It's a Pixel 6a. Yeah. 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 The thing I love about the Pixel, the, and actually this is a good example of this not happening because I didn't do it. If you look at the sky behind him, it's all grayed out. And yeah. the reason it's grayed out is because it's cloudy. If you touch the sky in the viewfinder on a Pixel, you'll get the perfect cloud delineation, or you'll see blue and gray, or whatever's up there. I didn't do that here because we were in shadows and I wanted him right. to be centered. Right. But if you do it with an iPhone, you don't always get that. And it's one of the things I really missed on the iPhone. On the Pixel, they do a really good job with that. And uh, and this phone does it too. It's just, uh, and that's actually, that's the one photo. I, I, I noticed it when I posted it. I was like, oh, that's interesting. But um, I didn't focus on the sky, obviously. I focused on my son. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great, great camera. And, Looks uh, good. A great, great there's phone. a certain quality, you know, as I look at it, there's just a, it's like a portrait level detail or something that just you it shouts pixel for some reason it, it, yeah there, there's a pixel right so if you use an iphone you might know actually i don't know the term but there are these modes in the camera where it's called vivid you know vivid to right. probably whatever they are i'm positive vivid is pixel mode it's built in yeah, yeah it's I mean, just a little bit extra vivid it's, it's hyper not real. as vivid as yeah. a samsung it, it almost looks like enough. hdr it's just got that it's, yeah it's a yeah. Li little bit of punch and it's yeah. it, it is actually exactly what i'm looking for um, yeah i, I mean it makes photos. it's they're pleasing i mean they're not you know maybe uh a professional wouldn't say oh yeah they're perfect but they have but it's what you look yeah. at on instagram you see it and you go oh that's good yep i like yeah. that yeah. It pops. It pops. That's nice. Yeah. 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 And I'm hungry, so stop posting <laughs> food pictures, will you? Yeah. Mm. The owner of this restaurant, did I tell you the story? His name is Joel. But of course, in, in uh, Mexico, you pronounce that Joel. 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 Oh. <laughs> Joel. What, and you went, um, you had some taco pictures. Uh, I think you went mm -hmm. to that place that yeah, uh, somebody feel, feel somebody. Somebody feed Phil highlighted, right? Was, is that the yeah. one? Oh, yeah. that place. No, yeah, you're right. That's, no, that's not the place. Uh, oh, the place that so uh, he highlighted is El Tez, Tizconito. Oh, it was okay. the place that invented the El Pastor taco. But this is a street taco. That's right. Los Cocoyos. This restaurant is smaller than my bathroom. It looks <laughs> so good. Yeah. You're driving it's right on the street. crazy, man. So, yeah. Lisa, the, the, li believe it or not, mm hmm Lisa says, "Yeah, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go visit the the Therats. <laughs> Wow! Mm. All right. She, well, you're welcome she, to come. I think it's the pictures that have wooed sure. her. And she says, "Yeah, I hear that penthouse above them is still available. <laughs> it's not above us. It's across from us. It's across the street. No, across the. It's just next door. It's like uh, so. We, you wouldn't hear us thumping around at five a.m. Not above us. No. No. Good. Okay." So then we can take the penthouse. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm looking at. Yep. I'm, I'm, Mar I'm looking uh, at Mauricio would love to see you. Hello, Mauricio. We will uh, transfer money one smuggled chub mm -hmm. at a time. That's right. <laughs> Tediously, as as we did, inch by inch, filling up yep. the coffers until we can buy it. Uh, so, is your review uh, live on your site now? Uh, yes, it is. Oh, the okay, pixel. Yep. Good. Okay. Good. $4.99. Uh, I've been telling people, I'm glad to hear this because I've been telling people on the radio show that this is probably the oh. mid-price mid phone to get. So, good. Good, good, good. It is. It's great. Yeah. It's a great phone. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the Pixel 7 coming soon. That's right. Mary Jo, you use Samsung, yes? No. No, no. no. She's I use Pixel the Pixel as well. Pro 6. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pixel 6 Pro. I don't like Samsung because I, I always say to Paul, I feel like they oversaturate the pictures. Yes, they, they totally do. do. Yeah. I don't, yep. they they do. don't love that. Yep. And the pix the look of the pixels is very natural. Yeah, I love the pixel good. photos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I also don't like the whole you have to be in the Samsung ecosystem thing, you know, where like you have to use our yeah, all our services that. that are on top I of all the other that. Google services I, and I'm Microsoft with services. With you 100%. <laughs> with yeah, you 100%. So I just, like, with the the duplication stuff is pixels. ridiculous. But I do yeah. have to say, your phone 
on Windows works best with Samsung. I don't know why, but it just really, it's like they designed well, it. Well, because yeah. it's a partnership. Yeah. Because Google and Microsoft are never well going to partner Pixel. on anything. No, it works That's so right. well, though, not... with my Samsung yeah. S22 Ultra. Google, those Perfect. two companies yeah. do not like each other. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. All right. I think we've uh, we've procrastinated, we've prevaricated, we've perpetuated, <laughs> and now it's time to do the Xbox yeah. segment. Um, we... If you're trying to follow along, Leo, I screwed up some of the links in this section, unfortunately, so I I'll won't click to, anything. I'll wing it here. I just, apologize. Just do what you want. We do have a number of, uh, of gaming stories that I think are important this week. Okay. So the first one is that uh, be, thanks. To, there's a lot of stuff that's been coming out in this legal filing stuff going around uh, on going on around Microsoft's attempted acquisition of Activision Blizzard, right? So Microsoft has you know, put filings in there. Go, uh, Sony has. Sony would like to prevent this from happening. Microsoft would obviously like this to happen. So one of the things that Microsoft admitted was something we sort of felt like we knew, which was that they sold fewer than half as many Xbox Ones as Sony oh, sold wow. PlayStation 4s during the previous console Oh, generation. that's not good. To put that in perspective... Both of those companies sold about the same number of previous gen uh, uh, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 consoles. Uh, the PlayStation 3 actually did come out ahead, but it was it was actually very close. About 80, I think it was 82 million somewhere in that range. Um, Sony sold 117 point something million P PS4s. Uh, do the math. It's some 50. To, I guessed 50 to 55. We so the actual numbers. The actual uh, filing said Sony has surpassed Microsoft in terms of console mm -hmm. sales and installed base, having sold more than twice as many as right. did Xbox in the last generation. So that's yep. Xbox now, One, and it's half right. whatever Sony sold. A couple of data points on that. Uh, Sony publishes exact numbers of what they sell, so we know what that is, so that's how we can do the math on it. Microsoft used to provide console sales numbers but stopped with the Xbox One. <laughs> Surprise, because they were so bad. Um, we know some of the reasons, you know, that we know the submarine story, you know, whether we're going to have the online requirement. We know that it shipped with Connect, which caused it to cost $100 more than the PlayStation you think that's 4 what did it? for the first year. That really killed that was, it, didn't I think, it? I think those contributed to it. People just the, had the, the perception that it's 100 bucks more yeah. for an Xbox. Well, it was. I mean, you know, it was. It was yeah. literally 100 bucks yeah. more. So the, the sad thing there is that through the Xbox uh, One S and then X, they, honestly, they did a fantastic job of improving that console over time. The nice thing is when we look forward to the new generation Xbox Series X and S, and then, of course, what they're doing in the cloud and all the subscription services, Xbox today is in a great place. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but Satya Nadella during the recent conference, you know, earnings conference call said that uh, Xbox has outsold Sony in the United States. I think it was for the four previous consecutive months, maybe three. But it's been outselling. They've been outselling Sony, at least at home. So, but they're not you know, beating Sony, are they? Is the no? He would have said that. <laughs> so, no, I don't think he's that, no. But you want them to be competitive. I I feel like they are competitive. It, it's probably closer to what we saw with the 360 and the PS3. Um, so really, the, console the one was just a low. blip. It was it was just a. a Aberration. Well, and Microsoft is also changing the game by pushing really heavily into game streaming, right? And uh, that, there's been some filings around that. I mean, uh, Microsoft complained, I don't have this in the notes, but that Sony has been paying publishers not to put their games on Game Pass um, because they're trying to prevent that from becoming too successful while they build up their own service. Um, Microsoft, uh, no, Sony has complained that if Microsoft gets Activision Blizzard, they might take uh, Call of Duty and other games off of PlayStation 5. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like most, I think, I'm sure over half of console gamers are going to be on Sony. Um, and actually, now that, we, now that we're on that topic, I should say um, there's a simple fix for this solution or for this problem, which is the reason we're going through this regulatory process, and that's compromising, right? In other words, the EU, the United States, or some other regulatory body could come down and say, look, you can have Activision Blizzard, but you have to promise you're going to keep putting these games on other platforms, you know, that kind of thing. And that those, those are the types of compromises that come out of these regulatory reviews. So I think this is the reason for these filings. I think that's what we're going to see uh, in the end. So I expect Microsoft to, to get Activision Blizzard. 
Uh, in less exciting news, where are we in the list? Um, these things are all in different orders now. Uh, it's we're, we're kind of heading into the second half of August, and so Microsoft has released the schedule for the games they'll release to Game Pass over the second half of the month. Um, a lot of, is often the case for me. I don't see anything um, for me <laughs> in this list, but there are eight new games coming over the next several days, so you can look forward to that across console, cloud, and PC. And I, yeah, I did this in the wrong order. And Sony, uh, you know, Sony, like Nintendo, used to be very specifically on their own platform, and that was it. Um, Nintendo has dabbled in mobile and not done enough, frankly. I don't know why they don't just put all their old games on mobile, but whatever. Um, Sony has been getting into the PC space. So one of the things they've done over the past year is announced that they're bringing a lot of their biggest and best games to the PC, which is kind of interesting. You know, you think in this day and age, maybe they would just look at the cloud and say, you know, we don't need to worry about the PC, but I guess it's big enough. And uh, now there is, uh, I don't know if this is a rumor, but there are indications that um, Sony might be working on their own game launcher for the PC because God knows we don't, you know, we need one <laughs> one more of those, but um, that could be coming. Yeah, so we'll see. And then finally, uh, Google has revealed that, or I'm not sure if they've revealed or it's been revealed by people who've seen it, that when you search for games that are available from cloud streaming services, uh, not just Stadia, but also Xbox Cloud Gaming, Amazon Luna, and uh, GeForce Now, you will actually get results that will click or link directly to that game. Wow. And you can just launch it launch it from there, right? Maybe that's what Microsoft meant when they were talking about launching the store yeah. without being in the store. That's pretty uh, wild. Yeah, that's neat. It's like, hey, I'd like to play this game right now. Click. And Do you think they would have done up. that if they didn't have Stadia? Like, and they probably, if it weren't for the EU, uh, they would have made it yeah. Stadia. You know, Stadia only. only. I was actually surprised it wasn't Stadia only. Frankly, well, although I think a lot of scrutiny for self dealing right now. So I was going to say exactly. I think yeah. if they had gone that route, they would have been. Uh, there would have been complaints, and that would have changed. So yeah. Anyway. Thank God for regulation. Yay. Hooray. Hooray for yeah. regulation. Is that, is that everything? I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. So, a lot of stuff going on this week. Nay, yay. Well, if that's everything, you know what that means. We're yeah. going to do the back of the book next. Back of the book begins, as always, with Paul Therott and a tip of the week, which he... It's, I was really puzzled that you didn't mention this in the Xbox segment, but yes, now I see yes, why yes, yes. he yeah. saved it from the Xbox segment. That's right. To make the Xbox segment even longer. Go ahead. Yeah, if you're okay. <laughs> right. Um, the Xbox segment often bleeds into the back of the book. So if you're a fan of Call of Duty, as I am, you know that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the, the remake, well, it's it's a reimagining. It's not really a remake, right? It's not exactly the same game, but is coming out this fall. You probably also know that last year's game, Vanguard, was a relative bomb in the Call of Duty world. I mean, still sold, you know, tens or hundreds of millions, whatever the units they sell every year, but um, gamers didn't like... I, I actually... I like the World War II thing. I think it's been outplay, overplayed. I, I, the multiplayer is terrible. I don't quite understand what happened there. This year is going to be huge. There's no doubt about that. But they have lost all kinds of players. And I think, sorry, I think what they're trying to do is get a little excitement going here because this one does look fantastic. So we already knew that if you pre-ordered the game, this is across different platforms, whatever platform you want, you could take place in a multiplayer beta, which we now know is happening in the somewhere in the second half of September. But they revealed this week that if you pre-order the game, you will be able to get the campaign up to a week early. Now, that language suggests it might be a different time frame based on how you're playing it. That's not the case. I think they actually just don't know when it will be available. But sometime, like up to a week before the game is generally available, if you pre-order, and you know you can pre-install it digitally, right, on whatever platform you have, you will be able to play the campaign. That's actually really interesting because one of the problems with Call of Duty is most of the games have both, obviously, campaign and multiplayer. Um, you don't know kind of which one to do from day one. And I, I made the mistake many years ago of always, I used to always do campaign first. So a week, you know, two weeks or a month or whatever was into the game being available, I would switch to multiplayer and starting with uh, Call of Duty 4, that got really complex. And I found myself in a game I didn't understand playing against people who had been there for weeks and, you know, knew all the nuances. And, you know, it, it leads to a kind of a weird issue, like which do I play first or how do I how do I do this? And so if you pre-order, you can just play the campaign first. It's kind of a neat little, uh, kind of a neat little perk. And I, I think, again, I think it's designed to, 
stop the uh, the flow of <laughs> gamers who were leaving the you know leaving Call of Duty. But I don't think so, this is the first game to do this either. I think other games have done this. Yeah, I'm trying to remember yeah, which right. one. Yeah, it's a good idea. Maybe Destiny like or something where you could you could do the can you could start it. And then, uh, and then the full game would come out. Anyway, it's definitely incentive. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 So, um, Leo, I remember you were away when I said this for some reason because I know I wanted to talk to you about it. But I switched to the Brave web browser whenever you were away in July, yeah. <laughs> it was, or, some, yeah. or maybe June or July. And um, I actually, the thing that's happened since then is I've also switched to Brave on mobile devices. I used to kind of use different devices, oh. uh, different browsers based on what, you know, device. Right. Um, but I actually use this across devices. Well, it makes so sense because of the of, sync, right? So you bring everything over to the mobile. Yeah. yeah. But it also makes sense because the reason you want to use it on a PC is the same you would want to use it on mobile, which is it's literally the most private web browser. The problem on iOS, of course, is that Apple forces use, use the WebKit-based web kit based engine. Right. Right. And Apple does their own, you know, they do a decent job. Even Brave says, you know, they do okay. But they also kind of point out that the problem with Apple's approach is that you get the good, which is great, but you also get the bad. And Brave's own browser goes much further blocking trackers and uh, protecting your privacy than Apple does. So what's interesting is over the past few months, they've really, you know, they release regular updates for this browser, as all browsers do. They've actually found ways to work around the limitations on iOS and now the claim they're making is that Brave is, in fact, the most secure and most private web browser you can use on that platform. Um, they go through a list of what they did to make that happen, and it's kind of interesting. But I, I, the thing that I am most interested in is this notion of Apple's restrictions preventing third-party browsers from, in this case, using the full range of advanced best-in-class privacy protections that they built for elsewhere. So if you use it on Android or Mac or PC or whatever, you know, you get these features that you haven't to date been able to get on iOS. So it doesn't have the full suite of protections you get elsewhere, but it actually, you know, compared to say three or four months ago, it's a dramatic improvement. I don't know what the percentage is, you know, 50, 70 percent, but it's uh, they've been able to do a lot more on iOS than they thought. Good. So I guess the point here is if you, yeah, if you use Brave or even if you don't, um, you should consider using it on iOS as well. I'm sure they're not doing anything that. Apple says you can't do, so... They've just figured well, it out. Are you? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, know. I use uh, yeah, I use no, Firefox Focus, mm. which is a, a privacy yes. on iOS, which is mm -hmm. privacy focused. In fact, Firefox Focus, once you install it, can also be used as a, as a filter on uh, mm -hmm. Safari. So it becomes, oh, you know, uh, ad blocking okay. on Safari. So everything goes through Focus. Yeah. I wonder. Check and see if Brave now can be used. Even when you're using Safari, if Brave can be used to uh, protect your privacy, to block, yeah, or as to a blocker, block trackers, oh, yeah, as a blocker. Okay, yeah, okay. That's how uh, that's how Firefox did it. Oh, curious. Well, I will have to download it and try it. Yeah. I just, you know, I just Great. use Safari because I figure, well, it's sure. all Safari at the at at the bottom. Yep. Retcon yep, five has put a uh, put the fac from Brave in here. Let me see if they. Talk about how they the get around idea. Apple's uh, restrictions. The blog post they have about these changes is worth reading just to see the, the various ways they worked around Apple's it's clever um, yeah. restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have to think they were nervous about. <laughs> yeah, but you also have to it. think that uh, Apple, just like Microsoft and Google, a little chastened yeah. by uh, you know the EU and others and. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as aggressively yeah. defending maybe, their yeah, rights. Maybe this is good timing. Yeah, that's true. Could be. You have an app pick. Oh, that was your app pick. No, that was the app. Yep. Brave on yep. iOS. Mary Jo Foley has an enterprise pick of the week. Mary Jo, I do. My enterprise pick is for anyone who is still using Skype for Business Server, and there are a lot of companies that are on premises. Um, the bad news is. Microsoft said yeah. back in 2020 that we're definitely going to have another version of Skype for Business server on premises and in 2021. 2021 came and went. 2022 is here now. Nothing. Uh, in June, they told me we're going to have an update shortly about what we're going to do for those people who want to run the next version of Skype for Business on prem. So this week, they came up with a blog post, a long blog post about, yeah, we said we were going to do this in 2020. And um, here's, 
here's what we're telling people now, which is go to Skype for Business Server 2019, which will be supported until 2025. And if you're asking about the mystery product, we have nothing more to share. Uh, we don't have any update on at this time. Where, at this time, <laughs> at this time, at this time. Yep. we have no update on when we're going to talk about the next version, V next. We aren't going to tell you yet how long it's going to be supported, how you can transition from the current Skype for Business to that version. Um, it's a little frustrating because I get this, I get questions about this quite a bit for people who say I don't, I either am not ready or willing to move to Teams, and I want to stay on Skype for Business. And they said I was going to have another version on Prem. Um, the answer right. is, uh, right now we don't know when you're going to hear more about the next version. All they're saying is, if you want to make sure you're covered, move to Skype for Business Server 2019, which is supported until October 2025. So it's a little frustrating, but uh, that's all we know at this point. If you're looking for an update on that, yeah. And uh, now we have both a transmitter and a transformer. I think we'll start with the transformer <laughs> and then go to the transmitter. Yes. Yes, I didn't even realize I did that. Yeah, That's I thought, um, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> The code name is Latte. Ooh, I like it. Small, uh, capital L, lowercase a, double capital T, T, lowercase e. Ah. Stands for Language Trajectory Transformer. That's a mouthful. What it Jeez. is, is very interesting. It's the idea of combining natural language commands and robotics um, so if you think about how to program a robot, the easiest way would be if you could just talk to it, right? <laughs> it would be like, hey, robot, don't go so close to this bunch of glasses that are on the counter. Move back. That'd be great if you could just program a robot that way. So Microsoft's trying to make that happen um, with this latte. They, they say they're building a framework that embodies two key ideas. One is you can use pre-trained language models to give rich user representations to people who are programming robots. And then they have this whole calculation for geometrical trajectory data with natural language. They posted a paper this week. If you're into this kind of thing, autonomous systems and robotics, you might want to go check it out. Um, I, I have a link in the notes to it. It's um, a whole white paper they've got on this. They've got a web page. They've got a GitHub repository that explains what they're doing. And very interestingly to me, a week later, Google uh, announced that was this week that they're doing the same thing, yeah. right? <laughs> um, they're also working on combining natural language and robotics and figuring that out. Um, it makes sense though, because if we're going to have robots ubiquitous in the home and stuff, you're not going to Oh, excuse me, I have to launch my Python to change exactly. the robot's behavior. No, <laughs> right. you want to be able right. to talk to it and say, stop no, walking exactly. in the wall. Exactly, exactly. And I think it's funny they call it, Microsoft called this Latte because uh, codename historians like myself right. may recall that Project Latte was a codename Microsoft used for the Windows subsystem for Android. This oh. is just a little different because oh. of the way they capitalize yeah. it. Kind of weird. <laughs> That's the transformer. That's the transformer. Now let's do the transmitter. Yes. <laughs> There's a brewery in Brooklyn called Transmitter Brewing. Um, they, they're, in, they're a little different from many breweries right now because they're trying to uh, make Bel a lot of Belgian styles and non-IPA styles. My like favorites. They're, they're like, yes, good. Everybody's doing IPAs. No let's need. do something yeah. else, right? <laughs> That's right. So they make, they make a beer called, uh, they actually, the way they label their beers is a letter and a number. It was a brewery formed by two former ad guys and they do things like a3, B12, this is W4. <laughs> they're, they're tired of writing clever names. So they, they are. <laughs> that's yeah. hysterical. They are. So this is called W4. It's a dry hopped Gozer. So Gozer beers are the ones that are a little bit salty and a little bit sour. Uh, it's a So this one is a perfect combination of salt and sour. Um, it's got coriander in it. It's got some salt. Mm. It's got a special kind of hop called Motueka, which gives it a very citrusy flavor. In this case, it's kind of like lime flavor. And so my, my takeaway is it's not just bud and Corona that you need with lime. Yeah. You could have a beer that has lime flavor already built in just from the hops. This and that's is what the W4 is. Sounds like. Very refreshing. Yeah. Light, refreshing. Um, just you could, you could sit there and drink a whole bunch of them. They're like 5%. Really um, like a nice amount of lime, not overkill on the lime. It doesn't taste cloying or fake. Um, it's just very like when you drink, you're like, oh, that's so refreshing. Mm. 
Um, so if you ever want to go to Transmitter and you're in New York, they're in the Brooklyn Navy Yard and you can take a ferry from Manhattan and just go over and drink a beautiful dry hop gozer. I wish I, you were with me when we go. <laughs> we go to uh, Petaluma has now. You, I think you've probably been there. You, last time you were here, you went to the place that had like 100 beers on tap. But they I have did. a, n- a yeah. new beer garden called Brewster's. It's not that new. Oh, it's nice. been around for a while. But it's outside. They have music. It's tr- nice. shady tree line thing, and oh, they nice. and they have some really good beers. And you know, I'm looking at them, going, I just wish Mary Jo were here. <laughs> so I had a gin and tonic instead. But uh, aw, aw. <laughs> uh, but if but if next time I'll probably just take a picture of the menu, yeah, and uh, and say what should I be drinking here? Let me yeah. see if they. Well, you have some. You have some pretty good beer guys at, at oh, Twit, as I yeah. recall. Yeah, <laughs> I could just ask them, but you know, I trust you. you. Could. They, you know, they, I think you're you're my expert, my local expert. Uh, hey, that does it for this edition of uh, Windows Weekly. Thank you very much. So you're coming home tomorrow, Paul, or later today? Tomorrow. All right. Well, next week we'll be back in sunny Pennsylvania. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> you're, I tell you, you're winning Lisa over. Keep taking beautiful pictures. I will. It, it really makes me want to go to Mexico City. Uh, you'll find Paul online at therot.com. Join the premium uh, part of that because there's great premium content in addition to the tons of free content. He also publishes his books at leanpub.com. The latest field guide to Windows 10, the field guide to Windows 11 is imminent. He'll be writing it on the plane home. I, Probably. I was working on it on the plane here. I thought so. so yes, yeah. I can tell. Uh, and... Uh, Mary Jo Foley is a senior, senior contributing writer at ZDNet. Her blog is all about Microsoft.com. Uh, thank you both for being here. We do Windows Weeklies uh, on Wednesdays uh, around 11 a.m. Pacific. That's 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. You can tune in and watch us do it live at live.twit.tv. If you're watching live, chat live, the IRC, open to all at irc.twit.tv. Discord, of course, for Club Twit members, that's part of your benefit. Ad-free versions of the shows, like Hands on Windows with Mr. Paul Therott, uh, and uh, the Club Twit Discord and the Twit Plus feed with all the shows that we don't uh, normally put out in public and extra stuff that we, we makes doesn't make it past the cutting room floor. That's all uh, at twit.tv slash club twit seven bucks a month there's a yearly plan corporate plans as well and you can just get hands on windows for instance into any individual show for 2.99 a month so it's a, you know if you just want that show that's fine um what else oh on-demand versions of the show available for free at the website twit.tv slash ww there's also a youtube channel dedicated to windows weekly and uh, of course best thing to do be subscribe in your favorite podcast player that way you'll get it weekly, automatically, the minute it's available. And if you do subscribe in a podcast player, leave us a five-star review. Let the world know about the best Windows show in the world, Windows Weekly. Thank you, you dozers and you winners. We'll see you next two, uh, Wednesday. Bye-bye. If you are looking for a midweek update on the week's tech news, I got to tell you, you got to check out Tech News Weekly. See, it's all kind of built in there with the title. You get to learn about the news in tech that matters. Every Thursday, Jason Howell and I talk to the people making and breaking the tech news, get their insights and their interesting stories. It's a great show to check out. Twit.tv slash TNW.